Disclaimer. This video's information is being provided for informational, educational, and general interest purposes only. The information in this video is not intended to shock, enrage, or otherwise provoke the viewer. The sole purpose of this video was to raise awareness of true crime-related events. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Rambo Rocky Way Nam Cam was found guilty of the brutal double homicide of a Vancouver couple in 2017 and was given a life sentence with no chance of parole for 25 years. It was decided in a Vancouver courtroom. Diana Ma Jones, a well-liked occupational therapist at GF Strong, and her husband Richard Jones, a retired man who needed a walker, were killed in September 2017. Cam was found guilty of their first-degree slayings in June. Kim admitted during the trial that he broke into the Marpole home of the couple and killed them there using a hatchet and a knife. The 27-year-old further stated that he had no reason to attack the couple because he didn't know them. Kim was seen buying a hatchet and other items in security footage from a Canadian tire that was played in court two weeks prior to the killings. The Crown had requested that Kim serve his sentence consecutively, which would have required him to serve 50 years in prison before becoming eligible for parole. Defense requested the mandatory life sentence of 25 years before being eligible for parole, though. Glenn Orris, Cam's attorney, previously stated that he had no doubt the double murder was a heinous crime. However, he noted that 50 years without parole would prevent Cam from even applying until he was 75 years old, meaning Cam has no chance of rehabilitating himself while incarcerated. Justice Laura Jarrow stated during sentencing that the victims were unarmed strangers who were murdered in their own homes after protracted and vicious attacks. She explained to the court that the likelihood of parole for someone who murders multiple people is low and came to the conclusion that this case was not one for consecutive parole ineligibility because it would be unduly long and harsh. In order for Justice Jarrow to conclude that a longer period of time was required to protect the public, she said she lacked sufficient evidence. She also cited victim impact statements from family and friends, which characterized Ma Jones as lively and a fun-loving person, as well as her husband as warm, kind, and generous. She said, no sentence will ever bring them back to you. While the outcome wasn't what they had hoped for, according to prosecutor Daniel Mulligan, it is obvious the judge gave the law and the situation careful consideration. The earliest he can submit a parole application is in 2042 and there is no assurance that he will be granted parole, as Madam Justice Jarrow noted, Mulligan said. I'm hoping that the professionals will be able to develop an understanding of his motive during the course of his time in custody through psychiatric counseling and assessments. But he decided not to tell us that at this time. According to Mulligan, the Vancouver police and the members of the public who assisted them performed exceptional work, which is why they were found guilty and sentenced to prison. The police were able to create a timeline of Mr. Cam's movements before and after the murders thanks to surveillance video provided by more than 100 private individuals and companies, such as Canadian Tire, Mulligan said. I'm hoping that Diana Ma Jones and Richard Jones' friends and family will find some solace in the verdict and sentence, and that going forward, they will put more emphasis on remembering and celebrating their lives than on how they died. Mulligan added that it was too soon to say whether or not the sentencing decision might be appealed. Have a seat. I think Chris has just gone to eat some water. Okay. Um, so like I explained to you, the conversation there was private. I'm still recording this. I'm going to switch this off in a minute when I'm done. This interview room is being audio and video recorded. Okay. Okay. So first things first, you just spoke on the phone there um, with uh, Ron Dumonso, is his last name. Um, you, you, 
You spoke to him, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel you had adequate opportunity to access counsel? I mean, were you given the opportunity to speak with a lawyer? Yes. Yes. I know you asked about me writing your responses down. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And is your lawyer attending the police station? Or what? Is, is, is Ron, is, is he coming to the police station? Do you know if he's coming? No, I don't think he's coming. Okay. So that's basically the legal side of it done. The time by my watch, like I said to you, it's 12.55, so it's five minutes before one in the afternoon. It's still um, November the 6th, 2017. I just switched that recorder off while you were in the room. So again, to explain, you're here in relation to police file 2017-199-228. And um, for the benefit of my little recorder there, what's your date of birth, Rocky? 1992, August 2nd, 82, 92, 2nd of August, 92, okay, and your full name, Rocky Rambo Way Nam Cam. Yes. Yeah, you're laughing, why are you laughing? I don't like that. <laughs> oh. You don't like all of the names or some of the names? Rocky Rambo, do you know Rocky Rambo? Well, I, yeah, I know a Rocky Rambo, yeah. You don't look like Rocky Rambo, do you? Not much, no, no. <laughs> Is that the, the, that's obviously the name that your parents gave you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiss, I mean. Huh? Kiss, kiss, I mean. Yeah. So, well. Oh, well. <laughs> you know. Oh, but everyone could, yeah, after they know my name, they, they could surely you know me. <laughs> like Rocky Rambo. Who? Oh, that guy. <laughs> oh, when you meet people, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rocky Rambo. Do you know Rocky Rambo? Oh, sure. Yeah, that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there's not, uh, it's quite an unusual name. Um, so, Chris is going to get you a bottle of water. Okay. Did you want anything else? Did you use it as a snack? Uh, maybe I should go to the washroom. You want to go to the washroom? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. What type of snack would you like? Any more like uh, well, I think the sort of stuff we have will be like chocolate bars or chips or you know that type of thing or sure, chocolate bars. Okay, like a granola bar or a, yeah. Would you would you normally would you normally eat? anything actually? Anything. Okay. Well, I'll bring a couple of things down, and if not, we can we can try somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, it's having everything things you. Yeah. Well, everything else is okay. Mm. Yeah. You fully understand what's going on. <laughs> well, what, I, 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 I told you before, if you have any questions, do yeah. ask. Yeah, but for, like, but I don't think you could ask. No, any, and I, like I said, Chris and I, our job is to make sure that this is taken care of, and um, any questions you've got along the way of any of the police officers that, that might speak to you today, you can ask ask those questions, okay? Yeah. Okay? I can I'm going to switch this little recorder off then. I mean, it's uh, 12... 59. Okay. okay. We maybe see you later on. Okay? okay. Take care. So I'm really you're just going to sit there and okay. um, somebody will come speak with you in the next place. Okay, thanks. Okay. See you. We'll come grab uh, some sort of snack or something for you then. Alright, thanks. Right. Take care. <laughs> Sergeant Leah Terpsma. It's good Hi. to meet you. How are you today? I guess you've had better days. Yeah, sure. <sighs> yeah, sure. Well, um, you're Rocky, are you? What? what should I call you? Is that the name you like? Rocky. Yeah, okay, I'll call you that. Call me Leah, of course. I've come in to talk to you about what's going on, because I'm sure you're wondering what's happening. Um, and there's a lot happening, of course, in an investigation like this. Pretty often there's a lot of people that we need to talk to and we need to clarify their involvement, if any, and um, move through some of these things. So um, let me ask you first off, we've got coffee en route, so how do you like your coffee? 
You don't like coffee? Oh my God, you are not a millennial. Would you like something else? I want some snack foods. Some food? What would you yeah. like to eat? Something that I can eat. Like what? Like a sandwich? If, if I can, sure. Sure you can. What, what would you like? Anything. A sandwich is fine. A sandwich? Like a chicken sandwich? Sure. We can arrange that. Um, yeah, make sure you let me know, Rocky, if there's anything you need for your comfort today. Like the bathroom or something to sure. eat or how's your health? Do you need what, medication what at all or no? No? You good? Good. Good. Yeah, sometimes people are, you know, there's sick people and they need their medicine from home, so we're gonna get that for them. So thought I'd ask you that. Um, you know you're under audio and video recording now. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I understand you had a chance to talk to a lawyer. Yes. That's good. Good. Um, tell me, uh, when you uh, were dealt with this morning by the police, or this afternoon, I guess, how did they treat you? Mm, oh, what do you mean? Well, how were you treated? Were you treated well? Do you feel... Surprised, of course. Yeah, you're surprised. Okay. <laughs> That makes sense to me. Uh, but uh, did anybody uh, do anything that you thought was kind of rough or said anything to you like you had to talk with the police today or or something bad would happen? Mm, no. Did somebody say something good would happen if you cooperated with the police today? No. Yeah, that's good. Because if someone did or said something like that, that is not in effect and we don't operate like that. So it's entirely up to you to, you know, cooperate. And, and I appreciate uh, how pleasant you've been. And it, you know, it makes it a lot nicer for me uh, when I have to come and talk to somebody and they're not um, a beast about it, you know. So... I'm gonna get some sandwiches going. So do you have any understanding of what, why you're here today? Yeah. Yeah, what's your understanding of the reason you're here today? They just said I'm under arrest for two pounds of murder. Yeah, do you know anything about that? The name of it. Do you, do you know those people? No, you don't know them. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. Um, have you, have you, have you heard about anything about this in the news or anything like that? I don't watch news. I know. That's smart because the news will get you depressed for sure. So then, yeah, the reason that you're here, Rocky, is that, you know, you're one of many people that we've talked to. And there's been times when we've seen you in the neighborhood. So we knew that you lived near nearby and so that's one of the reasons why we're talking to you here among a few other things as well but you know it's um helpful to me to learn that you you didn't you don't know those people um here they are here do you recognize those folks uh i have nothing to say yeah go ahead i have nothing to say okay all right, so with regard to these people, uh, are they familiar or neighborly with you? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So obviously this brings up some something emotional for you, Rocky, seeing... I don't have nothing to say. Okay. Well, of course that's your prerogative, for sure. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Prerogative means it's your choice. It, that, that's your your brothers to do that. I just want to make sure that if there is something that you want to talk about, that I give you every opportunity to do that. Um, you seem confused by all this, so um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we came in and and gave you uh, any opportunity. If you did know those people, then um, it might explain some of the you know the video that we have in the in the neighborhood and stuff that you know where that you're there maybe your friends are theirs i don't know maybe you're upset because your friends are no longer with us i don't know but uh it's my my duty to make sure that i give you an opportunity to talk about that if you want to 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I um, these things they you understand how police investigations work, I'm sure. And that you don't have, have you ever been arrested before, Rocky? No. No. Okay. Well, um, they're you know a lot of times they start out very very broad, and we end up with a big net full of full of of people, and and slowly those um, those investigations they narrow and narrow and narrow, and um, it, it helps us to focus and. You know, find where we're headed next. So that's what we're doing here today is just to find out what you know your involvement in this situation. If in fact you have any involvement in this situation. So if you know those people, uh, it would be nice to hear an explanation of, for that. If you don't know them, that's that's fine too. I just like to know what you what your position is on that. Well, it's just about these people. Like, I, I'm unclear. Like, I would like to clear that up. If you know them, then great. I would love to hear it. I have nothing to say. Okay. So, from that, I'm kind of assuming that you don't know them. No. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah, that's just basically what I wanted to know. So, is there anything that you need right now, Rocky? Sandwich. Yeah, okay, so those guys will get that for us right away. They've got coffee on the route, but I know you don't want any coffee. So, Rocky, you're kind of new to BC, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing here? Finding jobs. Oh, okay. Somebody told me that, um, actually, uh, Simon, who arrested you, uh, he told me that you were saying that jobs were kind of hard to come by back, back mm-hmm. in Alberta. What kind of work do you do? I had no specific job that I know. At this point, I don't know. You don't know? You're I, still I, searching? I can. I'm willing to do many things, but no, not much I can do. Normally what? Not much I can do. How come? Because I think Simon that. told me that you also uh, had been um, educated in... Was it economics? Yep. Yeah. So that's kind of an important job, isn't it? No. How come? What, what does that get you? What kind of job would that mean? Like accounting or what would that be? What? Economics. Yeah. What kind of job would that I'm give you? Bank, companies. Oh, but, okay. Well, so far, I'm like purchasing the company, but uh, well. Want to know. Oh, just I'm interested to know what brings you out west, and I thought maybe it was our mountains and lakes. No. Or you're not an outdoorsman? No. No, okay. Well, sometimes people come here for that stuff, right? Because we are pretty, uh, pretty full of the outdoors life. No, so you're not working at all now? No. A few months back, I worked some moving. Moving company? No, I don't know if it's company, but well, our friend, our roommate, okay, asked me to work. Do you want to uh, do some moving? Like, need some cash, camping. Okay. Something like that. Good. Are you finding it less expensive, more expensive out in Vancouver here, or what? More expensive. More expensive. Yeah. I, I, sure. I, I saw an orange, like seven dollars. <laughs> what? Really? Jeez, where are you shopping? Safely. Near your place? Yep. Jeez, that's it. For one orange. What? What did you say? That was yeah, seven dollars? Seven dollars, one orange. This, wow. I don't know. Maybe it's special, but I don't know. That is special. I think you could probably find something cheaper than that. That seems crazy to me. Yeah. Wow. So, and so, uh, are you are you close with your family? Uh, I don't know how to say close or not, but we communicate. Oh, that's good. Well, some people are, you know, um, estranged. You know, they're not close with their family, and it causes, 
issues, you know, in our lives. I don't know you're making a face, maybe it doesn't for you, but it certainly did for me when I was about your age. How old are you? Twenty twenty five. Twenty-five. So around that time in my life it was um you know, it was kind of there was pressure on to get doing something important, you know. There's pressure to get a better job and to do better and do stuff and it was a lot of pressure. I don't know if it's true for you, but maybe not. Hmm? What? I don't think so. No, you're fine. Okay, that's good. I still have money, but you still need money. I still have money. Oh, that's good. How do you have money? The saddest thing is my mother. It's my parents' money. Oh, okay. What do your folks do? Hmm? What do your parents do? My mom is retired. My dad is an engineer. Oh, yeah, okay. What I kind know, of I don't know what kind of engineer. No? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know much about his job. He <laughs> doesn't tell you? No, I'm just not interested in engineer. Oh, yeah. Did he want you to be an engineer? He said he don't like engineering, actually. Oh, really? Made him a nice living, no? Mm -hmm. Not bad? Not bad, not bad. Mm. What did your mom do? Hmm? What did your mom do? He, she was a teacher, but he's, she's retired now. No, oh, that's good. And they still live in Calgary, don't they? No, they, they are in Hong Kong. Oh, really? How much time have you spent in Hong Kong? Uh, do you mean, like, am I going back or what? No, I just wondered how much time in your life, because I know you were born there and then you yep, came here. I've been there yeah, since uh, uh, I lived there after high school. You lived there after high school? Or you left there after high school? I left there. Left, what was the difference? I'm not good at English. Well, that sounds okay to me. Um, did you, so let me clarify then, you, you came to Canada after high school? Yeah. Okay. So, what's your other language? Cantonese or? Cantonese. I, I don't speak Cantonese. It's my major language. Okay. I could speak Mandarin, English, and, well. Are you having any problems understanding me? If the vocabulary is difficult, I may not understand, but yeah. mostly you yes. You seem, yeah, you seem able to, to function well. Good for you to be so fluent in so many languages. That must make you valuable to employers. Well, I <laughs> that's one of the things I'm very right in the resume, but wow, I don't <laughs> Have you been applying for jobs? Hmm. Yeah, like where? 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 Where did you apply for a job? Everywhere. You didn't get a job? Still reading my news. Oh, okay. So where did you apply? Well, for, through the internet. Through the internet? Yeah. Like what kinds of companies? Companies I count? I basically do this job searching website. Enough. So to banks or to who? No, to bank some about purchasing, anything that, any jobs that require economics major. Okay. And no luck? No, uh, some luck, but, well, nothing super, super great. It takes time, doesn't it? No, it takes time. I, I heard some people who spend like two years to find a job they could do and well my my work experience is <laughs> not very good so and my English is not super so well it takes some time so well I'm still waiting I think your English is excellent no I don't think so <laughs> it is I'll tell you it's quite a bit better than my Cantonese of course. <laughs> don't, don't, don't speak Cantonese. <laughs> no. I did take a Cantonese course a few years ago and I found it so hard. Oh, it's necessary to learn English in 
Hong Kong, but it's not necessary to learn Cantonese. <laughs> well, it's getting that way. No, I think it's, it's Mandarin, right? Oh, is it mostly Mandarin? No. Oh. There's more, more, more people speak Mandarin. We have a lot of uh, kids applying to the police department of Chinese descent, and most of them, I think, speak Cantonese before Mandarin. I don't agree, eh? I don't know, but, well, more people speak Mandarin than Cantonese, that's okay. for sure. All right, well, maybe that's just my, my anecdotal information. Okay, so you're applying for jobs and haven't had any luck yet. Well, some, but uh, I'm still good. You're still good for money and everything? Yeah, so well, I could wait. <laughs> you can wait? Well, that's good. I uh, Sometimes those things is other pressures, right? Like what? I don't know, family pressures, pressure on you as a man from yourself. You know, sometimes those things. Well, you know, I don't know if it's good or not, but they don't pressure me. <laughs> they just, oh, I want to do. Oh, sure, go ahead. Oh, that's good. Just like I, don't, I, I want to go to uh, Canada, like Calgary. I don't want to stay in Hong Kong. So, okay, sure, yes. So go. nice. They support you. Yeah. How are things in Hong Kong? Did you live with your parents? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. And how was that? What in the house then? How was it? Was it okay? Because sometimes... It's not bad, but, well... I'm... Let's see. Turkey. Turkey? Warm. Warm? Thank you. Are there napkins in here, Parker? It's not all fun, so. Yeah, I need some. Good. Thanks, Bob. You go, my friend. Yes. I, I need a napkin for my gum, don't you? Yeah.
Hey, Rocky, how are you doing? Hi. I've got to find napkin so I can just get you some towel. Did you want the bathroom again? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. When's the last time you ate raw cake? Breakfast. Breakfast? Yep. Oh, jeez. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock? Mm, that's not bad. You're an early riser? Mm -hmm. Are you an early riser? No. No. No? Me neither. I uh, would like to be an early riser. My husband is an early riser, but not me. I like to sleep in. Especially if you're not working a regular job. Why, why get up early, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. So, where did you go to school? College. Where? College. Where? You mean university? Calgary. Was it hard? No. It's too easy. Too easy? Hmm. Well, I took some economics way back in the day and it wasn't easy for me so you're pretty smart no so it was easy for you but you're not smart that'd be just it's just easy in that university maybe um, my high school economics is difficult and uh, economics in university. I don't know why. That's interesting. Maybe you just caught on. Sometimes it takes a while to catch on and then okay. and then you had it. Well, that's good. And so what what um, degree do you have? Or do you have a degree? Oh. Like a... Economics. BA? Hmm? What do you have? Just an economics yeah, degree? just economics. Hmm. That's good if it gets you a good job. <laughs> do you have um, brothers and sisters? Hmm? No. What do you got? I a brother. I have had a brother. And I got a Wow, full pack. That's a full house. No. Three boys and a girl? No, no, no. One elder sister. No, no, no. no. One elder brother, my younger sister. Oh, so three of you yeah. all together. Okay, that's a lot of kids still. Mm, no. Mm. In Hong Kong, no. No, no. It's fair. Average? Hmm. In, in here, obviously not, but... Well, 
Well, three isn't unusual here, but it is a lot of kids. How are they doing, your brother and sister? Uh, good. Are they doing good? What are they doing? Uh, I don't know what my brother do, but he seems to be pretty good. He has two children already, so well, I think he's doing very good. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> my sister is still in university. Okay. She's <laughs> she's not not very good at not doing not, well. Not, not, not very good in studying, but oh. well, <laughs> she's not doing as well as you did. Okay. How old is your brother? Is he older than you? Seven years. So he's in his thirties already. Hmm. So he's a little ahead of you. He should have, you know, more than he's you. He's seven years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to have children one day? I don't know. Maybe you would have had them. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Most people do. I don't know most people. Now it's one of those things that might happen or it might not. What do you wish we knew about you? What? Is there anything you wish I knew about you to tell people, uh, the investigators? Why? Why? Well, because, um, I don't know, you're under arrest for murder, so you'd think you'd be saying, listen, no, I'm, here's what I want you to know. Like, for instance, um, I'd be super interested in your, um, what you were doing on the 26th of September. Because if I can get an alibi, do you know what an alibi is? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, if there's an alibi, I can go and... Mm, I don't think I have anything to say. Okay. Well, you know, Rocky, that's not uncommon. Because I sit with a lot of people in this room in your shoes. Um, most people feel that way at the beginning. Well, I have to say, most people, once they see what they're facing and what's going on, they change their mind because they realize that um, there's benefit in talking about. All right. They realize that there's a benefit to them emotionally to talk about what happened. So um, we'll, we'll go through some things for sure. But I, I totally respect your position that you, you, at this point, you don't want to talk about it. But you, you might change your mind, and I'm going to suggest you probably will. I don't think so. Mm. Well, I've done this more times than you. Yeah, no. no. Trust sure. me. Yeah. Trust me. It's a lot of work. How long? Are you going to hold me? I don't know. I'm not in charge of the investigation, but I have a lot of things that I'd like to talk with you about. So, for my part, I, you know, I have a lot of material, so... I think you're going to want to see it. Huh? I think you're going to want to see the material I have. Mm. I do. How are you doing? How are you feeling these days? Right now, not so good. <laughs> no. How are you sleeping at night? Hmm? How are you sleeping at night? Hmm? What? Like what? Just asking. Nothing special. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you're gonna hold me, I'm gonna sleep in cell, right? 
Mm-hmm. And I assume they don't have measures, right? Hmm? They don't have measures, right? Mm-hmm. They do. Why? Just ask. What's your biggest concern? Mm. I just want to know if it's uh, enough comfortable. If what? Comfortable enough. Hmm. That was a very interesting thing. Well, I'm not sleeping there, <laughs> so at least I want some. At least I wouldn't be very. I'm gonna say. I don't know. Crying. <laughs> like, wow, what's the bad is that? I don't know. How bad is that? I don't know. Just... You feel sad and you think you might be crying later? I mean, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, I don't know the future, but you look confident. <laughs> <laughs> so I may be crying, I don't know. Have you been crying? For what? In the last few weeks, have you been crying? No, why? Well, over this. I don't know that guy. You don't know that guy? Well, that's good to know, Rocky, because I... You know, if you... If I don't hear from you, then I don't know what you're thinking, and I don't know what's right or wrong, and... You know, I have lots of things, and I just, um... You're the one that has to guide me through it, right? And so uh, if there's something wrong, I'd like to hear from you. You know what I mean? No. Okay, I'll, tell, I'll say it again. I'll say it differently. Just now you explained to me that you, you didn't know that guy. Well... That's important for me, for to hear you say that, because this investigation is by no means over, and we have a number of people that we've talked to, and we have a lot of evidence, uh, and some of it we're not quite sure what it means, and if something uh, makes sense, then or doesn't make sense. I mean, really, you're the only one that can set us straight, right? Otherwise, we'll be on the wrong track, which I don't want to be. So you said you didn't know that guy. What about the girl? I'm not afraid I say I have nothing to say. Okay. Well, I, I can understand that. That's fine. It's, uh, it takes a while, you know? So don't worry. Um, like I said, I mean, I don't know if I talked about myself much with you, but I've been in this chair a lot of times with people who've had um, a difficult spell in their lives. Spell? It's definite, a difficult period in their lives, time in their lives. And, um... It takes a while to walk through it. You know, it, uh, definitely people start out with one opinion about what they should do, and then they change their mind. So, just keep your mind open, and if you decide to do something different, then I'm going to be here to help you with that. How is that sandwich? It's pretty good. We have a place right across the street. It's Italian. And it's good. I don't like the sauce, but not, oh. not bad. It's kind of a mustard thing, isn't it? I'm okay with it. It's good. Do 
you have any questions for me? No, I have, but I think you answered it. <laughs> Try me. You never know. <sighs> no. I will not ask. Ask and you may receive. <sighs> Is there anybody that you'd like us to contact? Let them know where you are? No. Is anyone going to miss you? Hmm? Is anyone going to miss you? For what? I don't know. Out in the world. Maybe. Do you have a, a woman on the go or a, or a <laughs> no. partner on the go? No. Why did you laugh at that? What? When I suggested if you had a partner, why did you laugh? Because I don't have one. <laughs> and my parents keep asking. <laughs> mm. Do they want to set you up with somebody? No. <laughs> well, just teasing. They want you to have a baby, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think I want a baby because they want it. Mm. That's not very good. No. Yeah, you should want it. Why? The baby. Like, you should want one before you have one. No. So if you uh, reconsider that question what? you have for me, don't, don't be shy about it. If there's something I can answer, I'll do that for you right away. If I don't know the answer, I'll get it for you. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's just not important. Well, then ask it if it's not important. It'll be easy to answer. Well, it's your job to put me here. But I have many things to do, but just not that important. I do the laundry. I want to buy the new pants, new shoes, but well, you're going to hold me for a while, a long time, so. Well. You said it was my job to hold you here. Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. No, it's I don't really know not. Before. Yeah, but well, I'm going to be here anyway. Someone's going to hold me. Oh, yes, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, one thing you should know, Rocky, is that I'm not here to hold you. I'm here to um, make sure that if you have something to say about this, uh, whether it's to tell me that you didn't have anything to do with it, I'm here to receive that information from you. Yeah, but Whatever even it is. if I tell you that... Wouldn't release me because of that. Just still need to do things, other people do their things, and I need to wait for a long time until I can get home. Is that what you wanted? Wonderful. Like you seem like you have a set idea about what is going to happen. What do you mean, wanted? Hmm? What, what do you mean, this idea? I don't know. It just seems like I don't this know. is a the set idea. The lawyers told me that you're gonna hold me until, until, until I don't know when. But you say it's gonna be a long time. Um, I need to wait. Well, 
either way what? Hmm? I missed what you said there. You said either way. I need to wait. So you're gonna wait. I need to wait. Okay. Well, I'm patient. I'll wait for you. I'm not. You're not patient? You know why you're not patient? I don't think anyone will be patient to like hold here to well without anything like I want to play video games, but well, that's not much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of video games, Rocky. That's true. So I, I'm forced to not play video games, and to eat the food I want to eat, that kind of thing. Of course, I'm present. <laughs> but well, this murder is the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That is one of the downsides, is that your options kind of get limited on what you get to do with your spare time. I don't know. Do you think it's fair? Fair what? Well, you just mentioned a few things that you'd rather be doing, rather be eating. It's some. not the matter of fair. It's just. I don't have any power. <laughs> if you if you need to hold me, <laughs> I can't be filled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's true. But you do have a lot of power. No, I don't think so. No, I know you do. But I'm going to explain that to you, that you actually have a lot of power here today. You're quite right that you don't get to play video games. Um, you don't get to walk out of here, but... But you do have a lot of power, Rocky. I'm sensing some... Not, not something I would hear. <laughs> not something you want to hear? Maybe. It doesn't feel like... You are... I don't know. How to say that? <laughs> My English is really not that good. I couldn't find a word. Okay. Use another word. Like what? No, no. I don't know what you're trying to explain. I don't know if I speak Japanese, you don't understand so well. <laughs> no, that's true. But say it differently in English so I can understand you. I'll say that. I feel like a trap. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> right, I can understand that. Well, that makes sense. That's what you do. But, well. but let me explain this to you, Rocky. Okay. The trap, if it's set, mm -hmm. it was set by you. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to show you some things, and they don't have anything to do with me. Okay. And they have everything to do with you. Uh-huh. So, if you feel trapped, or, or there's a trap, I mean, it, it, it is, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would feel in your shoes. I mean, I'm not um, trying to say that your feelings aren't valid because I think they obviously are but um, I'm going to be 100% truthful with you today I don't know if that assuages or, or helps to eliminate fears well, uh, okay. fears so that you think that I'm setting a trap or that I'm trying to trap you uh, I'm going to tell you, Rocky, I'm going to be honest with you today. Well, I'm... Um, I love to shop trust person, but it seems I'm not very good at that. Oh.
What did you just say? You said you're a trusting person and you've read yeah, that? about well, three months ago. When I the first in Vancouver. Um, well, how do you say? It was a fraud. Take a thousand bucks from me, and well, that's not very good. <laughs> and well, I trust him, but. Um, well, yeah. I don't know if you guys catch him or not, or very or not. But well, the police said they are investigating. But well, I don't know. I didn't follow up. So you're saying you're the victim of crime? What, what crime? You're saying yeah, someone yeah. defrauded you for a thousand dollars? Yeah. What place to live? He said, Yeah, sure. But, um, yeah. Oh. If you say I'm with them crime, uh, I don't know. Sounds like it to me. Just a thousand bucks. <laughs> That's a lot of money. You must be rich if you don't think that's a lot of money. Well, not that rich, but it's experience and you pay. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Well... Did you phone the police? No, I didn't, but the other guy gave me an address that uh, about the place. And I go there, there and the owner said that the, the, the fraud and uh, using this as his her address to I don't know do lots of things terrible things and she says you away from the police and I just give her my information that kind of thing and well, that's it and well I don't know if, if someone caught him or not but... where did that happen Rocky what where 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 in Vancouver. You mean the house or where I die? Mm -hmm. Well, I live in a hostel at first here, looking for a place to live. And well, that's when you come here. So what you're saying, I think, is that you tried to rent a place mm -hmm. and you gave the guy a thousand bucks. Yeah. And then what happened? You took away. He <laughs> hmm? <You> took away. He <laughs> took it away. How did he do that? I spent it. I I I should have seen the place first. That's 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 I, that's what I should do. But I'm not that smart. But well, anyway. Well, that when did that happen? On the food. Birthday, I think, in I'm not very good at dates, so. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that happened. Mm, why? Well, because I don't like crime. <sighs> that sounds like you were ripped off to me. Mm. No. Things happen. There's always fraud out there. Mm hmm. I think that yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm more responsible than I have to steal it. You learned something from that? <laughs> I, I don't even see the place, and if I think back, it's not very good at it, actually. I'm just not too... I should be more cautious if I have a little bit of that, but I won't. But well, it happens already. Hmm. Did it happen more than once? Just once. One time? That's enough. Because, I mean, I still think that's a lot of money and that would make me quite mad, actually. No, I'm still mad. <laughs> yeah. But it's months, months ago and well, I can't catch that guy. And the, the owner said they report the police like months ago already, but well. They I mean. reported something to the police? The bad guy did? No, the owner of the house. Oh. Okay, I'm misunderstanding. So you rented a room? I rented one of the room of a house. And I wrote the address and the owner said the guy is using the address 
He's pretending to be the owner, yeah. but he's not the owner. Oh, he's not pretending to be the owner. He's pretending. He's helping the owner to mm. find a roommate. They can't have ah, I see. And how did you pay him? Cash. Oh, gee. Yeah, you gotta try email transfers, man. Well. I would have thought a guy like you that's into video games and computers yeah. would be email transferring. <laughs> I mean, not that that would have helped you, but... I just... Um, I, I love... Uh, Holy Cash. Yeah. Not... No, it's not just, I don't know. Confusing to me. No, I, 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 I'm... I'm pretty good at computers, but... Just don't like it. Well, that's... That's fair. I uh, I wish I could learn to love holding cash, but <laughs> I don't have any cash to hold. You have to have some what? to hold some. What? Hmm? You don't have any cash? What? Well, I have money. I mean, I make good money, but I mean, I don't have cash. I don't have money to, like, purse no. money. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't need to. Well, I use a credit card for everything. Yeah. I don't use cash. I don't, probably don't have 10 bucks in my wallet ever. Mm. Enough for a cup of coffee, maybe. But you do everything in cash, even your rent? No, 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 no. No, everything. No, I don't use a credit card. You don't? No, I don't. No. Just Sometimes I want to use cash, sometimes I don't. Some, well, I used to have that, like, before, but mm -hmm. now I don't like it very well. It's just, I don't know. I like getting the points on my credit card. Points? Points, you know, like if you buy lots of stuff, you get um, credit towards a flight. Well, I don't know. I don't use credit card. <laughs> you don't fly anywhere? No. Nope. No, I fly from Calgary to here. Yeah. Well, I don't. Well, I I don't like collecting points. Nothing. That, no. that I don't. I don't do that. Do you um, vacation much out of the out of country? If I have a job, I should have had vacation. But where did you last go on your last vacation? No. I still haven't found any jobs yet. Oh, okay. You know, the study, study is not that hard. I don't need a vacation. Um, well, I'm not that outdoor outgoing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to go with somebody. If you go. Yeah, but no, they might be bad. <laughs> I'm not. I don't, I don't know. You need to work to get Asian, that's what I think. Yeah, that's true. It's a good idea. If you, if you don't work, you're already on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Do you well, find you get bored though? What? Do you find you get bored being what? off work all the time? No, I haven't. <laughs> Not bored? There are different, different, what? Like, habits? Interests? Mm-hmm. Like what? Video games, comics. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. Do you like, um, do you ever watch The Big Bang Theory? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. It's a TV show, I like that yeah. show. That reminds me, you remind me of those guys. No, I'm not that smart. <laughs> you're not a genius? Of course not. No? Have you ever had your IQ tested? No. <laughs> no? No, maybe no. I don't know. Well, no, I don't think so. How did you do in elementary school? Um, not, 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 not genius, but not bad. Good. Were your parents proud of you uh, with your work at school? <laughs> <laughs> 
Tet, I couldn't say. <laughs> they never said to you, Rocky, we're so proud of you. Uh, anything you do, I'm proud of it. That I heard. Um, I don't think I'm that good to be proud of anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I have three kids myself, and um, it seems to me that um, parents are proud. You know, it doesn't matter what their kid does. They think they're great. I'm proud of my kids. Mm -hmm. You seem independent. You seem like you have a good education. I seem independent? No, no. <laughs> if I'm independent, I won't be... Wow. You mentioned your parents' money, so I guess yeah. you're still dependent. But you're out here by yourself. Yeah. So, it's independent of sorts. No, it's more like I don't have a choice. Like, I spent a year in February. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find any jobs, so... Uh, just move to Vancouver to try my luck. Yeah. I don't know. Well, why would you choose Calgary to start? My brother lives oh, here. Oh, okay. I see. And no. And to, I went to my anniversary. And it's, I love Calgary. It's just quiet and peaceful. So you need a little more action. Hmm? You need more city action. No, no, no. It's, oh. it's peaceful. Okay. And quite, I love it. Oh, you loved it? Oh, yeah, good. that's why I live in Hong Kong. I don't like Hong Kong. Okay. Hong Kong is a very crowded place. I've been there. It's busy. There's buildings everywhere. No green areas. <laughs> that's just too... All right. So there you are. You're in... Did you ever live in Edmonton? Nope. Oh, I thought you lived there for some reason. But, um... Do you, when you came out here, Rocky, did you drive out or fly out? Mm, what do you mean, came here? When you came here to Vancouver, did you drive or did you no, fly? No, fly. Oh, I yes. don't have a car. You don't have a car? Actually, yeah. <laughs> I just sat in, in a car accident, like, last year. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember where. It's like, somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> I don't think I want to drive. Was it serious? Yes, it was. Tell me about it. Hmm. Like what? Well, how was it serious? Was somebody hurt? Yeah, somebody hurt. Mm -hmm. Where would be you could get more information from, I don't know. Internet? I don't know. I don't have to go. Were you driving? Hmm? Were you yeah, driving? I'm a driver. Okay. Who was hurt? Hmm? Who was hurt? I don't know your her name. Okay. It's a lady, but I'm not allowed to uh, visit her. Okay. So, uh, Did you want to, to apologize, or to see how she was? If I, I don't know, I, mean, I, I should want to, but... I don't know if he, if she would like you or not. Yeah, sure. But, well... I think she would probably like to hear that you're concerned about her, that's nice. That's I don't really know. really good. I don't have to wait anyway. How badly was she hurt? From what I heard, it's, it's pretty bad, but... You see, she's doing okay right now. Oh, good. But, uh, the police won't tell me much. Did it upset you a lot, that crash? Well, I don't know how to say. I don't know how to explain that, but sure, it's up that. I am harsh to that, but. Well, what upset you the most about it? I couldn't specifically name one, but I don't know. Sometimes people are upset because um, their insurance goes up, 
sometimes people are upset because someone was hurt or their car was wrecked, that they loved their car. Not my car. Not your car. Whose car was it? My mom. Oh, okay. Was she mad? Sure, she's. <laughs> yeah. Were you injured? Yeah, okay. Yeah, how? Your arm? Hmm? What, was, what happened to it? Just a little, nothing serious actually. Was it broken, your arm? No, 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 really. No. It just took a few days to recover. Mm, okay. Is that where these scratches came from? Is the car crash? No, no, no. no. Because you have kind of a serious cut there. What is that? This here. This That's the cops. Oh, the handcuffs. Oh, yeah, it looks kind of red. It looks like an old scar, but it's just no. handcuffs. Oh, it's sorry about that. Red. So it's new, right? I, I think, right? It's new. Well, it looks like an old scar from here, but I can see what you mean now. It's handcuffs. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's too bad that you had a crash. So you don't have a car out here, but do you b borrow somebody's car sometimes when you want to no. go somewhere to whistle? No. The bus here is fine. Better than Calgary. Is it? Yeah. Oh, good. So you can get around pretty well. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's not like Calgary if you want to go to like Vancouver. I, um, I don't know. You, you could walk to any supermarket nearby, but yeah, in Calgary, true. you need to you have a car. It's kind of... More sprawling. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but... Sprawling <laughs> means uh, far flung, like, uh, that's even worse. Like, far apart, yeah. you know. So you don't ever feel like you need to borrow a car or get out of town or anything like I don't, that? I don't go out very often. No, okay. Just if I get, like, get a chance to interview, I go out, but so far I don't feel the, um, I don't feel it's necessary to well, get a car. Yeah, sure. I would avoid it if I could, but I live so far away from town that I have to have a car. But I think if I lived in town on Granville Street, I would be, yeah. I would not have a car. I'd get a bus pass. I don't have a bus pass, but. <laughs> do you feel like you need a bus pass or do you just pay as you go? It's not worth it at, at this time. Okay, you don't do it that much. Yeah. If, if it's free, sure, I would get it. Yes, no. Supermarket safety is still very far, and the weather is getting cold. But no. Mm. Oh. oh, don't worry, you can just yeah. dust it off. That's what I did. They'll come in here and they'll vacuum for us eventually, I think. Yeah. Mm. So, um, was your brother surprised when you left Calgary? Sure. Were you enjoying your, your niece and nephew, or what do you have there? He has two kids. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Yeah. They, what do you have? Do, are they niece or nephew, or two boys? Yeah, two, one, 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 one girl. Oh, okay. How old are they? <sighs> I'm bad at numbers. You but, are bad. You should know that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember say I should know that. You should. I read them. Just still babies, anyway. Mm, little guys. So, did you look after them sometimes, or? No, no. Yes. I don't think I'm much of a baby guy. No, you're still a confirmed bachelor. And they, I don't know, my brothers, wife, and their parents to look after them. So well. Uh, Sometimes I, well, go see them and play with them, but I'm just, well, what do you want to do? I don't know, just to see him what, when you left Calgary, I would think your brother would be sad to see you go. 
to Vancouver? No, I don't think so. No? Why would he be sad? Because he loves you. And? Well, he wants to hang out with you. Play video games. Well, you got phones, you got video chat. It's not like a real person, but well, I'm not leaving because uh, I'm doing, I'm going to, I don't know, if, to, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just looking for jobs. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> if, if there's no job in Calgary, so that's why I left. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that's, that's not something, if you go sad, you should, I don't know. Yeah, alright. Well, I, I don't know, I think if my sister was leaving me uh, for another city, whatever the reason would be, I think I'd be sad. Uh, like, I have a kid. It's not I'm... like you, you're never going to see, see her again, I mean. No, I know, but if you are close and you tend to eat together and be um, together a lot, then... Oh, he got his own family. Yeah, that's sort so, of... Well. You didn't share much? Hmm? You didn't share much, like meals and things? Well, sometimes we, yeah, sometimes we, we meet and share have meals, but it's really getting nice and nice, but they, they have babies, well, that's... They're busy. They're busy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you get along with your sister-in-law? I don't know how to explain that. Good? Yeah, good. How come it took so long to figure that out? I, 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 I'm just, I, I, I'm sister-in-law. Oh. You mean my uh, brother's wife, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But well, I always think sister-in-law is some, some, uh, someone up credit to my sisters. Oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, I see. No, sister-in-law is your brother's wife. Yeah. Sometimes too. Yeah, good. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah, that good. <laughs> I couldn't say excellent, but good. Yeah, good. She's a nice lady. Not perfect, but yeah. Nice. Well, what makes her not perfect? Always shower at my brother. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I can picture that. Well. We all have one, one in-law that drives you crazy. Why? I'm not crazy. I'm not the one being shower. Huh? I'm not the one being shower. Yeah, I guess yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Every every time it happens, I just <laughs> <laughs> you just giggle it off. Well, that's a good way to handle it. At least you're kind of handling it in a light way. Kind of happy way. Mm, not bad. What are the troubles you have? Jobs. Jobs. Yeah, and jobs. Yeah, I find that is a huge frustration for people about your age. You know that. What age? Uh, 25, 22 to 25. People start really getting a lot of pressure from themselves and from their family to find a good job? I don't think so, but if you say yes, sure. Yeah, that is my experience. I mean, I um, I don't know if I told you this, but I work in um, the polygraph unit. What is polygraph? Polygraph is like lie detection machine. No. Oh. You know the thing? Um, and when I do that kind of work, I'm often doing pre-employment interviews. So before someone gets hired as a policeman, they have to come have an interview with me. Oh. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the young people that I interview express this to me, that when they're in their late stages of university or, you know, about your age, they start to get frustrated and start to feel pressure to get a good job. Yeah, pressure. Well, we surely got pressures. Pressures. Don't push people. You need pressure to uh, do a good job. Yeah, pressure is good. Sometimes it's good. If you don't have pressure, 
well, you don't put a lot of hard work on them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I feel the same way, but sometimes the pressure is too much, and it makes people do things they regret, you know? So that's what I like to find out, if, if it's, you know, regret in a person's life, then I like to find out about that. Because a lot of times, Rocky, there's, there's, there's reasons why things happen, you know what I mean? Uh, I know, but <laughs> I, I have something to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, those things take a while. So fair enough, you know, take your time. It's, um, it's one of those things that you have to take your own, your own time at. Yeah. It's, a, uh, you know, when I, when I think about this particular case, it's, um, a lot of people don't even want to talk to somebody that they suspect of this crime. They don't, they don't want to. Um, here. But they, um, you know, they kind of write that person off. Right, right, what? Write them off, or uh, sort of, they don't even want to talk to them or hear them out. Uh, and so I'm not that person. I'm a patient person. Doing this kind of job, of course you're patient. <laughs> You do patient. I don't think you do this job. Maybe. What? If you are not patient, I don't think you get this job. Yeah, I that's true. Maybe. I think that's true. I think that's true. There's um, you know, there's a lot that's gone on, Rocky, and I'm worried about you. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, there's a lot of people, like you've seen half of them already, that are working on this case, but, you know, they're worried about what happened and the people and the house and the, all that stuff, and and uh, I'm worried about you. I really don't think so, but go ahead. <laughs> you don't think I'm worried about you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, but, well... <sighs> I just shouldn't have to say anything. <sighs> yeah, I'm worried about you. And that's the truth. I don't know what you need. I don't know why, why we're sitting here. Uh, because I'm under arrest. <laughs> but why are you under arrest? Does he think I killed those people? Maybe. But why do you think I think that? I hope I know. There's a lot of things that led up to that day. And um, I'm worried about all that. I don't think it's a simple thing. It's very complicated. Worries or serious. I don't know if it's complicated or not simple, but it's surely serious. Yeah, it's serious. I, I mean, what happened to those people is serious. But I think what happened before that day is serious for you. Mm, I don't understand, but... Well, I mean, obviously, I, I can understand that it, it's hard to... Uh, I don't know, for myself, Rocky, I find it hard when I've screwed up or when I'm having a hard time. I'm Dutch. I don't know if the Chinese are like the Dutch, but Dutch people, when they get in trouble, or when they're scared, or when they're freaking out, they 
put their head in the sand and they rarely do the right thing. Do you know uh, what I'm saying? Uh, they don't do the right thing. I don't do the right thing when I'm uh, when I've screwed up and I'm under pressure and I start to go a little you know and I just think that that you know well, let's forget about that day that we're talking about here today. I, I'm worried about what happened before that day. Because I think that's the complicated part. Because I think that day was simple. But I think the days before it were very complicated. Uh, I don't really know how to respond back. Well, you don't have to. I mean, uh, I can s see that. I can see clearly uh, a lot of things, and I, I feel pretty confident. I don't need you to respond to it. I, I think that I understand human beings enough to know that there's something very complicated in you, and I don't know how you feel about it. I mean, if you're good, I mean, that's one thing, but I kind of doubt that, especially when you tell me you're in a car crash and you feel bad for that lady and you... You know, Anyone will feel bad for the lady. Right. So, I mean, you know what I mean? They're, you are a normal human being. And so, when shitty things happen, you feel bad about it. Uh, well, of course we are. <laughs> We're human, right? Right. And so, that's why I think that you have to be having a very complicated time. Mm. Not that complicated, actually. How can it be so simple? What do you mean simple, complicated? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what do you mean by complicated. Well, I mean, there's a lot that goes on inside the human brain. Yeah. When they get frustrated, or I, I don't know what your story is. I, I think I have a sense of it, but. Um, when somebody acts out uh, in a way that draws the attention of the police, um, there's usually a, a big story behind that. It doesn't happen in one day, Rocky. It happens in a lot of days and a lot of months and a lot of years of something going on. And you're the very best person to talk to about it. Well, that's your experience. I could not agree with that. I don't know much about that. But you know yourself. Oh, uh, no, no, yeah. Yeah, but I'm afraid. <laughs> what are you afraid of? I'm afraid that I can't, I can't say anything that. <laughs> well, maybe I already said it, but I can't say anything that makes you satisfied. I don't know. Well, I mean, you, you're not here to satisfy me. Uh, for sure, Rocky, you're here to satisfy yourself. I mean, there's a there's something in front of you, and I don't know if you know how serious it is or not. Yet. But murder, it, right? It's murder. Yeah. yeah but um, I'm not sure if you understand the the magnitude of um, Mag of, of ma the, the largeness. I know, I know, I know, I know. You know that one good. <laughs> I'm just waiting for your word. Right yeah, your word. you know, the magnitude of what's going to happen and what's going on. I mean, I want you to have an opportunity to, to address this. Because I don't think it's really fair that we only know, we only know what's in that house. Okay? Why are you laughing? What do we infer that you know the house? What? What I'm saying is that right now, Rocky, we have done a thorough investigation about uh -huh. what happened in that house. Mm -hmm. And you, you and I both know what happened in that house. Uh, I don't know, actually. You have to tell me. Okay. Well, maybe you don't know this house. Let me ask. <sighs> You're making me nervous. Okay. Right. Do 
Do you know this house? Maybe you don't know what happened in that house. I have nothing to say. Have you been inside this house? I don't want to talk about it. So is that a yes? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so we're back where I was. And then I think, you know, it's very clear to me, Rocky, that you know exactly what I'm talking about. And what I'm saying to you, Rocky, is that I don't, I, I, I'm the person who's going to be here to listen to what you have to say, to hear this complicated situation that you were in before that day. There's something very complicated. And it is unfair for the investigation that went on inside that house to be the only thing that we see about you. I don't think fair is important. You don't think fair is important? Well, at least you, you're just trying to do your job, sorry. Well, no. <laughs> Not really, Rocky. Not really. You're misunderstanding something. You're watching too much TV, Rocky. No, 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 no. Just, well, how can I say? What, what you think is not important, actually. Just, well, you got evidence, you think? I don't know. Why do you think that's what what's happened to you before that night isn't important? I don't know what night you're talking about, actually. I'm talking about September 26th of this year. So about uh, five weeks ago. <sighs> I'm bad in days. Okay, well, I, 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 I believe I already said that. So, well, uh, and I really have nothing to say. <laughs> okay. So, Rocky, this wouldn't happen to be the house where you rented a room and the guy took your money, is it? No, of course not. No? If, if, I, if you want to know, I could tell the name of the floor. Okay. And I just wondered if that was involved here because it was on my mind. Yeah. If you want to know, I could also give you the name of the, the... I don't remember the address. I don't remember the name of the actually. It's on my phone. But, okay. well, it sure isn't the two people that you... The, the person, they the showed you the picture of, right. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, fair enough. Thanks for telling me that, because it's, it's something that's on my mind. And, and she's, she's a very young girl. Huh? The fraud is very young. A very young person? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kind of handsome. Uh, Oliver, Oliver what? Joshua Oliver. Joshua Oliver? I don't, I, I don't maybe a topography name. But. Okay. <laughs> Probably if he took your money. Yeah, he got Facebook that name that. But. And did you phone the police or did they, the owners phone the police? Yeah, the owners said he would phone the police that in charge of that case. Did the police ever come and talk to you? No, because I just, I, I left my phone numbers and my name, but well, there isn't any cars, but mm. well, <laughs> mm. there's nothing I could do anyway. There's no what? Nothing I could do anyway. Well, I could phone the police. No, I don't think that would be much of that. Why? Because there is already a case. Well, you. Mm. See, that's the thing. Maybe the person you talked to was working with this fraud guy. Yeah. Maybe. And they just told you that they would call the police maybe. and they didn't. But I'm too lazy to, well, I know find a job. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a little more important than that. <laughs> yeah, but $1,000. Yeah, but I don't think I'll get the $1,000 back anyway. And I, 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 know, I know where he spent all of that money, too, actually. He spent it to a strip club. How do you know? Because I went to a strip club with him. Oh, so you know him a little bit better. So I, 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 I'm wondering, oh, you got many monies. I'm wondering what kind of money, 
Right. Oh, that's my money. Then, then I now I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I understand. Well, that's interesting. But, well, right. Thousand dollars is well, it's it's money, but <laughs> yeah, it's not that much. To well, good police concerning that kind of thing, I couldn't get it back anyway. I don't know the, how the system works, but I doubt I could get the money back. Do you have, um, sometimes people I talk to who are from Hong Kong or China, they have a, a certain feeling about the police. Uh, you know, they don't trust the police. Wow. Well, there's always some uh, diff different crops in it's not good to say I don't trust. I don't trust Chinese. I don't trust Jewish. That kind of thing. That's. I don't think that's very good. No. Good. Every country have. Every nation have good and bad. Police. Police person. That kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the police. No. I'm not talking about Chinese. I, I, speaking, I don't have but... any interaction with police. Oh, good. Actually, it's just well, in the accidents. And here, right. Actually, and so have the police given you any reason to not trust them in Canada? No. And as I say, I I haven't had any interaction with them. No, I've had quite a bit of interaction with the police today. Yeah, yeah. Been okay, huh? Well, uh, not not so okay actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I finish, uh, I take my bath, I'm going out to buy new pants, new shoes, uh, waiting for a bus stop, and two guys, and then two guys come here, I, I thought they were waiting for a bus, and then a guy come here, oh, I thought he was going to run, so I go up, and, uh, and then they grab me, mm. and well, and they say that they're police, but how do I know? Do <laughs> <laughs> you believe know. them it, now? It, you're yeah, funny. I, I hear it all the time. I don't know. Maybe they. Sh I don't know. The TV they show their badge first. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they just grab. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they the gangs. Actually, I thought somebody is trying to harm me. Actually. Oh really? <laughs> Three people trying to grab me. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden. Did you see the uniform policeman there? No. Not at all. No. Oh, there was a few there. No, I don't see any. Oh. Yeah, just very, very casual. Right. Yeah, casual. And they just grabbed me. And I was, I was uh, like trying to uh, play my phone. <laughs> okay. Well, they were the real thing. And here you are. I don't know. <laughs> if they want to arrest me, why don't, why don't they? I don't know. Came to the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons, right? Robert? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you imagine why? I don't, I can't, I don't know why, but... Well, mostly because they're, they're, um, getting a search warrant today for your house. Oh? Yeah. They're going to be searching your house. Maybe they're searching it already. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's most certainly. <laughs> yeah. Most what? Certainly. Mm -hmm. they, they, of course they are. <laughs> most certainly. Oh, I see, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what they're doing there. Yeah, but... Uh, just um, that seems to shock you a little bit. No, I just realized. Well, every man have something they want to hide anyway. Sure. Like what? <laughs> Prawn. <laughs> porn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't worry about that. Everybody has porn in their house. Yeah, but I know that, and I, I, I sure know they, they won't do anything about that. But is there any is, porn on, on there that you're worried about? Mm. What do you mean? Well, yeah. sometimes there's pornography, and then there's illegal pornography. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know much about that law. No, well, so, pornography that involves children. No. There's pornography that involves um, bodily harm, which means uh, someone is being cut or oh. hurt really badly. Oh. That okay. kind of stuff. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. Is there anything like that? No. No? Okay, good. Um, so, uh, 
if I was going to talk with you again sometime, Rocky, how would I get a hold of you? Like, what kind of email address do you keep? Mm, I don't use much email. How do you communicate? Phone. Phone? Yeah. So you don't email? No, if necessary. Really? Like finding job, sure, you need to email. <laughs> What's your email address? Can I email you? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me, please. Just call me. I'm hurt. Just call me. Call you on what number? You have my phone number. Do I? Don't Is it the Calgary you. number? Or do you have a BC yeah, number? Yeah, Calgary number. Oh. Well, um, what else are you worried about there at the house? Worry? Worry, yeah. Uh, stress, stressing about that search warrant. Stress? Stress. So stressing? Yeah. I don't think anyone like it. someone stress your room, right? Yeah. That's not very pleasant. What do you mean what's not pleasant about it? Someone stress in your house. Oh yeah, that's not pleasant. Everyone's got their privacy. Yeah, right. Yeah, well. I'll get you a copy of that search warrant so you can look at it. No thanks. <laughs> you don't want to see it? If, if the lawyer said it. Yes, sure, but it's, it, yeah, I understand English, but I don't know any right, any law about it, so it, it's, it, has, it, it doesn't have any meanings. You, you just <laughs> write, write paper and write down the search warrant, okay, oh, that's search warrant, okay. Do you mean you think it might not be real? <laughs> that's pretty stable, it's yeah, real. Yeah, that's anyway. pretty real, yeah. Yeah, that search warrant is going to be pretty real. Is there anything in that house that you're concerned about? No. Is there any reason why we'll find anything in your house um, with regard to these people? No, well, I don't think so. No? That I could be sure. See that gives you some stress, Rocky. Oh, of course it is. Can I relieve that stress for you at all? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. If well, uh, if that's right, don't search my room. But you surely could do that. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna do that. I'm so. They, they are. So good. what? <laughs> but um, I don't know. Sometimes we can alleviate stress. Sometimes people have pets, or they have letters they want to go off to certain people or they want to save certain things for certain people and so on, you know, if there is any... Yeah, that's the way to relieve my stress. Give me my phone. You want your phone? <laughs> I, want, I want to pay video games, pay apps. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about I, that. I, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, I'm sure you, you wouldn't would do it, but... I would if I could. Oh. How's that? Yeah. I just have a well, promise. I need to do something in the game or not game. Oh. So with my friends. So. Is there someone that you want us to call to tell no, them to be able no, to do it? No. Or no. Just, they'll just understand. Famous. It's not very important. <laughs> oh yeah. To, for friend. you guys. For you guys. It's not very important. It's important to you though. Well, keeping promise is important. Hmm. That's good to hear. That's really good to hear. Oh, well, you are, I'm, I don't think I'll get my phone back. Okay. You guys get it. <laughs> at, least, at least not today. Not today, no. And that's all it takes to break a promise. Mm -hmm. Well, Rocky, I'm going to show you some things today. And I really hope, and I, you know, I hope that you'll make a promise to me. No, I don't make promises. Well, uh, at least, at least I don't think I'll make it here. Yeah. Well, it's going to scare me out because it may be an easy promise to keep. No. Oh. Some promises are hard and some are easy. Yeah. I didn't trust that person to make a promise, but I'm sure you're not. You're not my friend. No, 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 no one in this building is my friend. Either. I'm going to tell you something truthfully, Rocky, and uh, you're right. We aren't friends. 
But there is a difference between uh, friends and humanity. Yeah. You can show humanity towards another person without being friends. Yeah. And without um, complete. Yeah, but I'm not in a position to trust you. But I'm forced to be here, so I I couldn't trust anyone any time anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I think that. Let's let's break that down. I mean, I think that you you feel that way on a personal level, but I think you can rest your mind and trust that I'm going to tell you the truth, right? Because I'm not ever, I haven't been telling you anything that's sugarcoating it or making things easier. I hope, I hope you haven't. But it's well, not what part that of it has been nice? It hasn't been right. It's all been bad news. So I've been truthful. And I'm going to continue to be truthful, so you can trust that. Yeah, but you you do realize it's it's a murder, it's serious. Yeah, I do understand that. And sometimes you know what, Rocky? Sometimes it really makes sense to bury your head in the sand when serious things are going on. Sometimes it makes sense. Yeah. In this case, I'm going to say I don't think it makes sense. So I'm going to show you some things. You're going to see why I feel that way. I'm not just going to expect you to trust me or believe me. I just want you to to make me a promise, a commitment that you're going to keep your mind open. That's all. That's an easy promise yeah. to keep, right? Rocky? Yeah, got to show here. me anyway. Right. I am right here. Come right. on, shake my hand. Okay. Promise me you're going to keep your mind open. You're going to look at this stuff. Okay? And you're going to trust me to tell you the truth. Because I am going to do that, I promise you. I feel, I get a sense from you, Rocky, that I'm the only person in your life right now who's prepared to stand up and say, I'm going to tell you the truth. No, actually, but... Uh, okay, well, good. I'm you got to show me anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm glad to hear you have a support system. But you do have some support in me. I'm going to show it to you with some dignity. I'm going to show you some humanity today because I think that you feel like you don't deserve any. You're kind of talking yourself down a little bit today. Yeah, I'm sure. I think you have been. And I think that might be part of what's happened. That you have a bad yeah. opinion of yourself. Uh. I have nothing to say. Okay. That's okay. That's a difficult thing to face, right? Well, not not difficult, but not, not in this room, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably uh, right in front of you. See, it's easy to face. I don't know. I don't know. Well... At least, uh, how do I say? People often look down to themselves. I don't know. Well, what do you want to know? <laughs> I just think that's a factor because ever since I met you here today, you've been kind of um, talking down about yourself. I don't think I am, but... No, you are. You're minimizing your successes at school and you're minimizing yourself. Because I am not very successful. <laughs> well, you... That's a fact, actually. <laughs> it is, but sometimes those things become a self-fulfilled prophecy. Well, I, I wouldn't lie about that, actually. I'm not that successful that and, I, and you could check that. <laughs> I'm, I don't I don't always get A. That you could check. Why would I lie about that? Yeah. But you know what I think? I think it goes deeper than that, Rocky. But you know what? We don't have to debate that. Uh, uh, here, do you want me to take that garbage? Thanks, uh, I'm going to go get some more water. Yeah. And I'm going to get some materials to show you. Sure. Okay? Remember, you're going to promise to keep your mind open, and I'm going to promise to tell you the truth. And you don't have to trust me like a friend, but I want you to trust 
what I'm telling you. Because I'm uh, telling you the truth, okay? Okay, I'm going to try. Good. I appreciate that. Give me a few minutes. Do you need anything? How are you doing? Alright. Okay. Alright. Do you like water? Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. How are you doing? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, good. Of course it's boring. It's boring? Of course it is. Oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're boring. Oh, that's I think you're interesting. No. Yeah. It's totally boring. I guess it's all a matter of perspective. Earlier when I was talking to you, Rocky, I said, I thought that you were kind of being hard on yourself. And you just did it again. What? You just said you were boring. <laughs> Locking this room? Oh, Locking you're bored. Me. I'm bored, sorry. Bored, okay, oh, sorry. that's different. That's, that's my, that's my fault, sorry. No, no, that's not anybody's fault. It's just one of those things. It's good to talk things through, right? Yeah, it's important that we spend time to clarify what we mean and what our issues are because uh, sometimes when I do these things, I have a certain idea in my head about what the problem is or what the complication is, and sometimes I'm wrong. When I talk to the person, they tell me what the issues are. I think, oh, I was off on that. I needed to clarify that. So that's something you and me, we need to do uh, over certain issues, right? If you have a question, make sure you ask, and I'll do my best to answer the question for you. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you need? No. It's going to take long. Yeah, I think so. Bathroom? Hold on, let me get a boy. Because, uh, you know, the bathroom is for boys. Hold on. I'll be right here. Won't be very long. Okay. Yeah, make sure you just shout if you find you need something lucky because, uh, I don't want to leave you waiting or needing anything. Yeah, I'm hoping that they'll get us some more coffee too. Not us, me. Yeah. I know you don't drink coffee. Yeah. You never drink coffee? I try, but you know, if I want to wake, I drink coffee, but most of the time it just what about alcohol? Do you ever drink alcohol? No, I don't drink alcohol. Sometimes someone's swearing. I, I would, but... Usually not? Usually not. Just me then. Hmm? Just me then. Alcohol? Oh yeah, sometimes, yeah. I have a couple of glasses of wine now and then. Why not? It tastes good. I don't know <laughs> if they hurt me or what. Let me go. Oh, I could wait. I know I, 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 I know I do wait, so I... I don't want to make you wait, though, boss. Hold on.
You're welcome. All right. Thanks. Sorry? Yeah, I thought uh, Lee was in. I think whether she left or. just talking about you, you know, you again, when I came back in, you know, you were kind of talking about that this was boring and, and whatnot, but um, I hope it mean, doesn't mean that you're not paying attention, because there's quite a bit of complicated evidence that I want to show you, and I want you to make sure that you're engaged and um, paying attention to it. Uh, I'm going to see it anyway, right? You're gonna what? I'm going to see it right anyway, right? You're going to what? You're gonna show me anyway. Right? Well, I'm gonna show you, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. I think you want to see it because you know I think you're an intelligent no, person. No, I doubt that. <laughs> it's a murder case, so well, I doubt that. Yeah. We'll see. I, I think you'll find it interesting anyway. Um, and one thing I wanted to reiterate with you too, Rocky, is that we talked about um, about my role here, and I, I don't think I went into detail about what I tend to be in these things, but have you heard of a devil's advocate? No. You don't know what that means? It's kind of an expression, and it means that uh, someone is assigned to be the... Uh, a person who looks from another perspective. Okay, so if, if, for instance, there's a whole team of people that is investigating something like this, all the evidence might point a certain direction, but we always assign somebody to, to take another look at things from another perspective. And so many times that person is assigned to analyze evidence uh, from a different perspective and sometimes that person is assigned to try to see another perspective of the person that we're dealing with okay. and that's me okay. so what I'm trying to I tried to say it earlier but I don't I don't know if I said it very well but I um, I mean we're gonna go through it and you're gonna see that 
there, there's a big mountain in front of you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot for you to have to deal with today. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people who feel a certain way about this case. Mm -hmm. That's very serious. And my focus is on you. Like, I want to make sure that, uh, like, I'm worried about you. And I'm worried about what you're, what caused this and what is going to happen for you within yourself. Uh-huh. Okay? Like, I just I want you to understand my role here. Because the investigation is, while it's not complete, it's quite, it's quite uh -huh. complete. And my role is separate. My role is you. And I'm worried about that. And so I, I just want you to understand what I'm doing here because I think you've kind of lumped me in with a bunch of other cops. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I understand that, but sure. Okay. Yeah, I just want you to uh, realize that I'm not here to... Um, more than anything, I'm here to empower you. And I know that you're feeling, like you said earlier, you don't have any power, but that's not true. There's a lot of decisions to be made, yeah. Yeah, there is. And I'm going to show you what they are, okay, because you don't see it, because you just see this room and no video games and boredom, but there's a lot that you can do and a lot of decisions to make. Okay. 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 Yeah, I just want to make sure that you feel that you understand that there's a lot, there's a lot uh, at stake for yourself uh, in terms of uh, your future, about how you feel about yourself. Okay. 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 So one thing. That I was going to show you. This is, um, this is a ball cap. Have you ever seen that before? Maybe. Tell me about it. I don't know. What, what do you want to know? No, I want to know. Do you own that hat? It's a ball cap. Yeah, it is a ball cap. Have you ever owned a hat like that? I have nothing to say. Well, I mean, it's a, it's an important thing. Um, if you have owned a hat like that, I'd love to know about that. I I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you a little bit more later how that hat um, connects to this incident. Mm -hmm. You got sorry anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I what I don't want to do is pretend between each other. I know that when you see that hat, that it has an impact on you and your mind is going about that hat. And so I don't want to pretend that that hat isn't important to the investigation. I'm going to tell you that hat is very important to the investigation. And if you have something to do with that hat, let me explain it to you this way, Rocky. When something like this happens, and it happens pretty often in Vancouver, actually, you know, yeah. the person in your shoes, it, they have a lot of decisions to make, as I explained to you earlier, right? And they have a, there's a continuum of uh, time frame when I sit with them, when they decide to start making good decisions for themselves and good decisions for uh, their family. 
And so what I tend to like to do for people is I like to lay things out for them slowly so that you can demonstrate your willingness to be forthright and truthful. Sometimes people, it takes them right to the end. They, they have to see it all before they can face the facts and face the truth. And, and that's okay. I'm willing to sit with you as long as it takes, you know, for you, for your comfort level. But this is the beginning. And I just want you to know that this hat is important to the investigation. And I, I know that you understand why. Have you ever seen that hat before? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So, I mean, you and I both know that you've seen that hat before. I know for sure you have. And remember what I said to you earlier that I wasn't, I'm not going to bluff ever today. And I'm not going to lie to you, Rocky. But I'm going to tell you with 100% certainty that I know you've seen that hat before. And I'm going to show you how I know that in a little while. But I'm going to do this slowly because I want you to show your humanity to this case and to yourself. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say this, that people who have done bad things in their lives, we don't just, I know me when I've screwed up and I've done something bad, really bad, and I've done really bad things in my life. We can't just say, oh shit, I'm sorry. I apologize, I'm you know, not. right? You can't do it, it's too hard. There's a process, there's a grieving process that has to go on with somebody like you. And today's the first day that you've realized, holy cow, I'm going to have to face this now. I have to deal with this. How am I going to deal with this? And it takes people some time to say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm, you know, I'm going to make some decisions here. And so that's why I am here, because I like to be that person, that conduit that helps to people to take the step towards doing the right thing. Because you've done some wrong things here. There's no doubt about that, Rocky. Very wrong things. But I'm not judging you for those things. I'm not. I'm judging you about what you do about it today. Okay? So there's a lot to go through yet. It's not just about a ball cap. Um, but I just want you to know I'm going to be very patient and, and let you do what's best for you. Do you have anything you want to say about that? No. Do you have any questions? Okay. So that's the ball cap. Have you ever seen anything like that? I'm just showing you the, the axe. It's just the time I'm putting here. Yeah, I that. Some people don't take because they don't understand the 24 hour clock, but you do. That's yeah. good. I'm impressed by that. Why do you understand the, t the 24 hour clock? Why not? <laughs> I think, why, why don't you understand that? They don't. I don't know. I don't think before I was a policeman I would understand that. I understand that. I don't know why, but sure I do. Good. That's cool. Let's talk about that axe. I don't want to talk about it. I think I know why. Uh -huh. I think I know why you don't want to talk about Rocky, this isn't going to go away, just so you know. It seems um, a point of discomfort for you. Yeah, it's discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> Every 
discovery. Yeah. What makes you most uncomfortable? Being in this room. Is it uncomfortable having to make decisions about this today? No, it's difficult to stay here. Yeah. Did it not occur to you that this might be the ultimate result of what happened? That someday it might culminate like this? I don't know what you're talking about. So then, Rocky, if you're telling me that you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't know those people. You never went to that house. Is that what you're saying? I have nothing to say. Okay. Yeah, I can understand that position. I think you're um, trying to um, make things disappear. Or I think if you think that if you don't face it, that it'll go away. I think you have a very youthful, um, a very youthful approach. Things don't go away. No. Did they for you in the last few weeks? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I think that you were bothered by this, uh, Rocky, because, you know, we talked to your landlord. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you know what he told us? He said that in the last few weeks, last five weeks in fact, mm -hmm. that you used to be kind of a social guy and you'd sit out in the common areas of the house and use your computer and talk with the other tenants and things. Not exactly. Yeah, I can see you're not a super social guy, but he said yeah. you were, you know. I, I go to the camera because the Wi-Fi connection is better. Okay, I see. And after the lady, uh, What's his name? Lisa? Yeah, Lisa. Okay. Move out. Mm. And I found a way to, uh, I changed it to 5G to not 5G, and the reception is better in the room, even in the room. Okay. So I go to the room. Oh, okay. So when did that 5G change thing the, happen? The, the, the date where the Lisa guy, Lisa lady moved out. The Lisa lady went with out. And I think it's, it's just five week, five weeks early is uh, September twenty six, right? Mm-hmm. I think he she moved out like before it. Okay. Like at the beginning of the month. Okay. And the landlord don't don't see me very much. Actually. I see. <laughs> they live in the basement. Oh, okay. And <laughs> I doubt he see me very much. Right. Well, I guess he's talking to other people there who are saying that there was a change in your behavior after this incident occurred. I don't remember the dates, but I have something to say about that. Yeah, I think that would be quite a normal reaction, Rocky. You know, if something like what occurred happened and um, a person was part of it, Whatever the, the the things that happened before it, I I think it would be quite a um, have an impact on a person's mood. I already said I didn't change the behavior. I don't remember dates, but probably not not dates here. Okay, so you're saying that your behavior changed because the the net the um. Connection to your computer got better. Basically, I just used the computer outside, right. <laughs> and the connection is better, so I moved to the inside. Okay. <laughs> oh well, fair enough. It's a coincidence. And mo most of the time, using the computer outside is not very good. Okay. Because I have some personal stuff I need to deal with. Okay. Well, I'm glad I asked because you know, it seems like a clue. Right? If somebody says to us, this guy's behavior changed a lot right at this time, and you're Or you could say, I'm back to normal. Over in this house, in the house I live, okay. like uh, one, two, three, four, five, totally including me, five people. Okay. All five of them, all four, out of four of them, 
basically just lock them in the room okay. unless they want to cook something. <laughs> they be basically the common areas. No one uses it. Pretty quiet. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm the only one who uses it. <laughs> uh, Before that, Rock used the common area because of the 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 internet connection was stronger. And then it was corrected after Lisa moved out. Yeah, no, oh, no, 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 no. I changed it to 5G to not 5G. Ah, okay. Uh, we use a common to the internet connection that he, after Lisa left. Uh, Rocky changed it from 5G to not 5G. And you think that happened right around five weeks ago or so? I don't know the day Lisa was up. You could ask them or I don't know the date actually. Okay. Because he, she, that Lisa is moving in there and it's difficult to do some further self okay. recovery. So I'm trying to well, fix that. Okay. Uh, well, when Lisa moved out. Okay. Well, I'm glad I asked. That's why we talked to you, right, Rocky? So that you can say, that's not right, this is right, okay? So if there's something that is wrong about what I'm going to show you... Then I have nothing to say. <laughs> well, no, you should correct me like you just did. That's the right thing to do. So it's smart. you got to do the smart thing, right? you got to do what's best for you. I'm not very smart. Well, you know what? Everybody feels that way sometimes. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. But you're not a dumb guy. You have a degree in economics. That is impressive. Doesn't mean, I doesn't, doesn't mean I'm not dumb. <laughs> well, I mean, people can be dumb in ways, right? I mean, you're good with math, probably, and numbers. Yeah. But... Uh, you know, maybe you're not that good an outdoorsman. I don't know. Yeah. Well. Some people are good at some things and not so good at other things. Uh, and I don't think that you're a dumb guy. That's why I'm taking the time here, Rocky. Because I don't think you're stupid. Some people do bad things, and there is no hope for that person. There is no getting some connection with that person so that we can have some understanding that they're never going to do it again, that they get the help they need in terms of psychological help or whatever it is. Um, that's what I'm doing here. If I thought you were a write-off and dumb, I wouldn't come in here. I'd just let them take their evidence to the court and that would be it. Most people don't, don't want to bother talking to someone who's done something like this. But I do. But why don't you just take the evidence to court? Because we're learning all these things about what, what's a fact and what's not so true. Like this thing with Lisa leaving, which caused a behavior change on your part. We thought the behavior change was because of what happened in that house. And it, it's not. So we've corrected it. I doubt anything I say will change the result. <laughs> well, it depends. You're right on some level. And I'm not going to lie to you. On some level, it's not going to change what happened in that house, Rocky. That's true. I'm not going to lie. That's true. That happened. And that is done. But what you say can change people's opinion of you can change the opinion you have of yourself. You know what I mean? There, a lot of, of amends can be made. Uh, a lot of understanding can go on. A lot of humanitarian feelings toward a person because something like this doesn't just materialize. It doesn't just happen suddenly. Something's happened to you. That's caused this. I don't know what it is. I want to know what it is. I 
I know you're not laughing because you don't think that because you think this is funny. I know it's because you're uncomfortable. No, it's not because I'm uncomfortable. It's because well, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, that's normal. Don't worry about that. I'm not offended by no, that. No, I'm just in my position. Even well, what my position is, saying anything would be wrong. That's where you're wrong. That's where you're dead wrong. Because, I mean, you said it before, it's not going to change uh, what happened. I said it before, what happened in that house has happened, and what you say now isn't going to change that. But it is going to change the, the feelings about what happened in that house. People act out and they do bad things. Usually, well, every single time I sat in this room with somebody, Rocky, and I'm, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. When I go back and I talk to that person, and, and it takes longer with some people, right? Some people are, are very upfront about their mistakes very quickly, and some people take a little longer. But the truth is, they all share. At the end of the day, they all share. And I always find out what... Sometimes it's a hundred things or a thousand things that caused a night like this. And when I hear it, I always end up with a very sad heart because I know that if that person had had the right friendships or the right parents or the right connections or the right luck, they wouldn't be here. And so I feel sad and I feel like people should see something like this so that they know when they see their friends in distress or they see their family in distress, they should reach out and take care of that person because we don't want to have happen what happened to you. I always feel a sense of sadness and empathy for you, your person in your shoes. And I, th I think that you don't believe that because you know what went on and you think, geez, do I deserve empathy, right? Is that, I mean, I think that's probably what you're thinking. Do I deserve empathy? And many people don't think you do, but I do, and that's the truth. I want to know what those thousand things were that led up to this. I really do, because I don't think you're a bad guy. You don't seem inherently wicked. I appreciate you say that, but I I don't think the, well, the price of believing you is too high for me. And, well... Oh, you don't have to believe me. I mean, I'm not trying to convince you of something, Rocky. Believe me. Um, what you have to do is believe in making decisions for yourself and in believe in yourself. I know you you have a, a you take a hard line with yourself. You're hard on yourself a lot. But today I think that you know you have to sit back and and um, believe in yourself and believe in what's best for you. So don't, you don't have to trust me or believe in me. All you have to know and you're already committed to this is that you would Keep your mind open, and you'd believe I won't lie to you. You have to, you have to try to think about what's best for you. And I know you're thinking, what is the upside here for me to talk about this? Wow, that doesn't make any sense. But really, Rocky, as we go through this, and you're going to notice. I'm starting small here uh, with, with the evidence that the investigators have gathered um, because I, wanna, I want you to come in with me early. I want you to show your empathy for those people and their family early to show your humanity. So that's why I'm doing this slowly. If it takes longer, that's okay too, brother. But I'd like you to come in with me early so that we can go together and say, here it is. 
It's a ball of shit, and we feel bad about it. You know, but you, you don't have to have any faith in me. I'm just here to be the, the monitor, you know, the computer monitor. I'm just the thing you're going to look at. You have to make decisions for yourself. I'm going to help you see what your choices are. And I hope that you'll make the right choices, but you don't have to trust me or believe me. Okay? Okay? Okay. So there's the axe. You don't want to talk about that. How about those? Have you ever seen those gloves? There's nothing to say about that. Where are those gloves now, Rocky? Gloves? Mm-hmm. What gloves? These, not these ones. These are some we bought after to, um, to compare to the gloves that we, um, the markings that we saw on the walls at the, at the house. So we bought these afterwards too, because we know that these are the gloves that were used. So we know these aren't the gloves, but, um, the gloves that were worn that night, where are they? Are they in your apartment? I, they haven't finished searching, so I don't know. You probably threw them in the garbage. I have nothing to say. Okay. So those gloves, I'm going to show you how I know that those are the ones, that's the brand that you used. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to... Keep in your mind, Rocky, that from the very beginning I told you, you, you know, record this, right? Leah told me she wouldn't lie to me, so I'm not going to bluff. I'm not going to say I know this and I know that when I don't know it, okay? So I know these aren't the gloves, but this is the exact same kind of gloves that were used that night. I know you've seen those before. I know that for sure as well. And I'm going to show you how I know that in a little while. And again, the reason I'm doing this is not to torture you or make you guess or anything like that. I'm doing this, Rocky, to give you every opportunity in the world to come on board with me early. Early in this investigation that I'm going to show you. Because I want you to look better than you look now. Why are you laughing? Mm, I don't look. I don't look bad. I don't look good. No, I mean you don't look good. I promise you, you don't. Yeah. It looks terrible. So there's absolutely no downside to taking a step towards something that doesn't make you look so bad. I don't know why this happened, Rocky. I really don't. But I'd sure like to know why. I'm going to tell you something about that guy. That man. He, um, he isn't a very nice guy. Yeah. That man that died. He's not a very nice guy. Did you ever meet him? In the street? Or at the shopping mall or anything like that? I don't want to talk about it. Well, I just want you to know that I've heard from lots of people in the neighborhood because he walked a lot in the neighborhood and he had a problem with alcohol and he wasn't a very nice man. He was rude to people at times. And I just wondered if that played. Like if this guy was an asshole to you at some point for some reason, and it, it hurt your feelings. <laughs> I have nothing to say. What's so funny? Because I have nothing to say. Well, that's not funny. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm trying to connect the dots. I'm trying to find a reason for this to happen because it either happened. 
because of something that was going on with you separately or a thousand things, like I said, that's happened in the last years that has caused something with you or maybe it has to do with these people. Maybe that man was rude to you. Maybe he was a dick. Or maybe it was a combination of the two. You know, it was a... I don't know. I do know that whatever it was that happened, or, or why it happened, it wasn't funny. Well, forgive me for... well... It's my error. I can stop it anyway. It's just... Uh, well... It's a habit. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it's Who a knows? habit. Nervous smile. I've noticed that you laugh at inappropriate times sometimes and it's maybe part of your personality or... Coping mechanism. Coping mechanism, yeah. I think so. This is a lot. It's a lot to cope with so I can see how Every coping mechanism you have must well, be I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. <sighs> I want to alleviate that nervousness. You know, I, I, one thing that people in your shoes describe to me all the time, Rocky, is this crushing uh, feeling in their chest, this fear, and it's a physical feeling about being unable to breathe and feeling nervous to the point where it, you can feel it in your chest. And um, one thing that people have told me in the past is that once they get through this process and they make some good decisions and they come out the other side, that kind of eases up a bit. It relieves some of that anxiety and that nervousness, if you will. Okay, so it's something you can look forward to. Okay? I know you feel like laughing because you probably have to laugh. No, you. I appreciate what you have to say, but I really have nothing to say. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. We'll go slow. We'll go slow. So those gloves. You ever seen them before? I think you should say yes. And the reason I think you should say yes is because it's the truth. And I know it's the truth and so do you. These are some footprints. Thought we're at the house. Have a close look at those uh, rocky. You'll notice that there's a, a definite pattern to those shoes. You notice that? It's kind of got it like a on the bottom. You notice? You ever seen shoes like that? Oh. Are those your shoes? I got nothing to say. How long will we get us? Hmm? How long will we? Uh, like how, how much longer do? You? Well, I would say that we're about a tenth of the way through the evidence, and we haven't. I haven't shown oh. you any evidence yet, actually. I mean, these are things that I'm trying to bring you along with me, so that you'll you'll talk to me about this sooner than later. Just because it makes you look better, Rocky. It makes you look better if early on when someone is caught to say, shit, I'm caught, I'm sorry. But I mean, that's why I'm doing this slowly, but there's a lot to go through. I have some video to show you. Do you understand how police uh, investigations work? No. Okay. Well, let's back up and do that. 
Shall we? Let's do that, Rocky, because I feel like, I feel like you're thinking to yourself, I'm not sure. I don't know if this lady's telling me the truth. I don't know if I trust her yet or if she's really going to try to bluff me or lie to me or whatever, but let, let's talk about police investigations. When something happens, like in this case where this couple has been murdered, uh, the police show up and the, one of the first things that they do is they do a canvas. Do you know what that means, a canvas? Yeah, search the neighborhood. Yeah, they search the neighborhood area. They search the immediate area of the house. Um, they'll um, interview people in the neighborhood. And they go to um, every house within blocks and blocks and blocks and find all the video. To, you know, all the, it's so common now. Just about everywhere you go uh, in a situation like this, uh, a person can be, their movements can be tracked. Yeah. Because, they, you know, lots of houses have video, right? And so I want you to know that your movements were tracked. Do you know what I mean? is that your movements were tracked. And they weren't just tracked um, that night. Um, they, were, they were tracked for a long time. Before that, actually, because what they can do is they can go backwards, right? Once they identify someone uh, in their video surveillance, that they've gathered up all this video after an incident happens, then they can say, oh, that person is interesting to me. Hmm, let's find them in other places and times. And so we were able to go back to September 13th. Do you know what happened September 13th? I got nothing to say. I know you're not laughing because it's funny. I know you're laughing because you're scared. Uh, I will try to make it. I know you're trying to cope, it's okay. I'm not offended, but I'm just trying to point out to you that- No, it's just funny that I just keep saying I have nothing to say. But I must. I want you to think about that. As we talk here, as I talk, you don't have to say anything. That's your prerogative. That's your choice, yeah, for it's sure. Yeah, really polite. Although it's very polite already. It's very polite to, to respond. Well, it's up to you about your own personal ethic if you are okay being impolite or not. I mean, I'm not offended, hun. I'm not. I've been sitting in this room with lots of different kinds of people. And you seem very polite to me. Uh, you do. No. You're okay. You just be yourself. You just be yourself. You're gonna be fine. I know this is scary. Just, well, what? Not that far. Well, I'm I'm going to lose my attention. I'm I'm kind of sure. It's just well, I don't know how long can you hold me, but I don't know. I want you to know something. I want you to get this in your head. We're holding you. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So and wait till you see what's here. Because I want to remind you, I was just talking about September 13th. Uh -huh. Do you know where you were on September 13th? How about you remember? <laughs> I can show you how to remember because I know where you were September 13th. You want to know where you were? I don't want to talk about it. You were at the Canadian Tire buying these gloves. 
I'm buying this hatchet. I'm buying this hat, son. I got you on video doing those things. So I don't want you to sit there thinking, this is nothing. I don't have to worry about this. You have to worry about this, Rocky. It's not a laughing matter. It's not a matter of being polite or impolite. That car, all those movements are on tape, honey. Now I'll show you that stuff. I'm sorry. That's okay. I know as I reveal these things to you, it's going to become scarier and scarier. No, because it's I just impolite too. Well, just what's using impolite? My shoulder. Using my shoulder to respond to you. It's just pardon me. Using my shoulder to respond to you. That's not very good. Well, I mean that's your own ethic, but you don't have to worry about offending me. No, I know. What offends me, Rocky? What offends me is that something like this happens and someone doesn't offer an explanation. Because I don't think you're I don't think you're a bad person. I think that something's happened to you which has caused you to act out. That's what I think. That's rude. Hmm? That's rude. What's rude? You'll think. What what's the truth then? Fix fix it. Tell me what the facts are. I don't want to be rude to you either. You don't need to worry about that. I have nothing to say. You have lots to say. It's just whether you make the right decision and decide to say it or not. You know, it's, it's about decision making. It's about power. It's about giving these people's family some idea about why this happened. Exactly. Don't you think they're owed a little something? I really have nothing to say. Okay, Rocky, well, we're going to carry on. These, by the way, are, are not the, um, this isn't the one that was at the scene. We went and bought another one. Um, what's covered up here, I can show you in another photograph. That's the receipt for your purchase. somehow. Um, but that's not the one we found at the scene. What's underneath of here, Rocky, is a serial number. So what our investigators did, because this was left at the scene, not this one, but the one that you used. And there was a serial number on that, which is what led us to you. So then we went back and found this purchase and we have your face at the till uh, buying that hatchet and that hat and those gloves mean anything to you I why did you buy those things I'll tell you what I'd like to know is that these things were purchased on the 13th of September. You didn't use them for two weeks later. How come you bought those things?
Did you know it was going to go so bad once you went inside? Maybe you didn't intend to have happen what happened. I don't know. If things just went really grossly bad and not your intention whatsoever, then I'd like to hear about that. What did you want out of there? I don't want to talk about it. Painful? Without my lawyer. Pardon me? That's a very uh, What? What did you say? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do, Rocky, is I'm going to go and get the video so that you can rest your mind that I'm telling you the truth. Now, I've told you that I know you went shopping on the 13th of uh, September and that I have your image, your face, buying these things. And I have the receipt to prove that. And I'm going to show you that video so that you can start trusting that what I'm saying is true. Okay? Do you believe what I'm telling you? You're gonna show me anyway. Yeah, I am, but I wanna know how you feel about it. Do you believe me? Because, I mean, sometimes people don't talk about their mistakes because they think, ah, you know, I'm not really caught. That's what they think. They tell me this later. I didn't really think you had the evidence. So I thought I would hold out. What's your position? We're waiting for you to get those video. Okay, let me get it. <laughs> You're gonna get it anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure I am. For sure I am. I just I'm trying to I'm trying to establish some level of trust with you, Rocky. Because I think that you've been defrauded by friends. Mm, no, no friends. Well, you went to the strip club with them. No, just the strip club is nearby. Well, so that's sort of a friendly thing to do. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It wasn't a friend, but you've been defrauded. You describe that you don't have very many friends. Well, I have friends, well, sadly, online. Well, that's fine. I don't know. It just seems to me that you don't have a great level of trust with other humans. No, it's just the level of trust is not out here. Well, uh... Yeah, I can, I, I'm trying to establish that, that while you may not trust me as a friend, I don't expect that. But I do expect you to trust that what I'm saying is true. That's the, that's the thing I'm after, is for you to believe what I'm saying. Okay? So I'm going to show you those videos, okay? Anything uh, else you need? No. No. Yeah, you seemed like you wanted to say something there. <laughs> Yeah. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> what? Well, what I want, you can't bring me. So, what do you uh, want? I want to go home. Can you bring me home? Sorry, honey. That's not going to happen. Yeah, so. Well.
something difficult or hard or something that makes them not look good like I'm asking you to do in this case um, and if they do it it shows fortitude it shows strength and it shows uh, a manhood that I think that you are craving in your life you know what I'm saying I don't know how I got this so tied up Holy moly. Here, fix this for me. Please. <coughs> Did you understand what I just meant, Rocky? Understand? Yeah, did you understand what sure. I meant by that? Sure. I don't agree at all. You don't agree? Okay. But that's well, not why important here. It's not important? Thank you. Okay. Well, I mean, we don't agree about that, but anyways. Sometimes people, they do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And some people do the right thing because it um, makes them look better. I don't know why you're going to do the right thing, but let's, let's see. Yeah, this is what I want to show you. So let me just pause this. I'll notice it says, uh, this is September 13th. Do you see that date there? About five minutes to eight. You see that? And this is, of course, Canadian Tire. Your store, local store there. Do you recognize it? I went there. Yeah. I like Canadian Tire too. Most people use Canadian Tire at some point in their lives. So, I noticed there you are. And, um, I also noticed your backpack that you had there. So did you notice all that? So I want you to know, uh, Rocky, this is a key, key thing for us. Because once we had that hatchet and it had that serial number, this is an interesting bit of video here too. Because here you're looking at the knives, right? Were you looking at knives for some other reason, for cooking or something? Okay. So once we 
were able to find this purchase of these things uh, for which we either find in the house or we uh, find near the scene or we find evidence of these things, it caused us to, to fixate on you. Now let's look at the third Canadian Tire video. Hatchet gloves. You know that hat, we found it underneath the table at the house where all this happened. Here comes the fourth Canadian Tire video. And you're just at the tail. Tire was quite helpful to us because they, you know, once we had the serial number off that hatchet, they were able to direct us right to this video here. Rocky. And they gave us the transaction right here that was related to that, um, to that purchase. Anything you want to say about that? Do you want to tell us why you bought those things? I'll tell you something about policemen, Rocky. They're always going to assume the worst if you don't offer some explanation. You know what I mean? So, even you, as an intelligent person, well, we keep saying you're not, but you are, you know, you're not a dumb guy. I don't know. Policemen are always going to assume the worst, unless you offer some explanation. This is two weeks before the murder. So something has to be going on here in, in Rocky Cam's mind, right? Something's going on with you. I'd sure like to know what it is. I want to be really clear with you too, Rocky, that we don't need you to say anything, you know. Like, this is it. You're going to be charged with two counts of murder. Okay? Here's the fifth video. This one's interesting because of this right here. Do you see that? You see what it is? Yeah, it's a backpack. It's your backpack right there you are coming to get it. Well, that backpack appears later in other videos. Right? Okay, so just keep that in mind as we go through the evidence. There's some video from earlier in the evening, uh, the night that those people died. Let's just 
you walking around right here and leave me. And there's video. You know, we just follow and follow and follow. So you can understand this part of the police investigation, uh, Rocky, right? Where the police, um, like I said, they go to the scene and they just carve out a big area of space and they just start looking everywhere for video and anything else that might be of interest. Things that have been tossed away like car keys and things like that and for video. Uh, like when um, the, the, the car left the scene of the house and drove around the neighborhood and right rummaging around in the car all that's captured on video lock in the car and the headlights light up all that's captured on video, Rocky. Don't worry about that, Rocky. I want you to focus here because it's important. It's way more important than a dirty carpet. Okay? Is there any reason why you'd be driving that woman's car? I've got to say. Well, I'd sure like an explanation for it, Rocky, because it's obvious what's happened, and there's just no reason why. And this is obviously something that you've thought about for a while, and I don't know why it happened. And I'm super interested in that. No, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, one thing that occurred to me, Rocky, is that somehow, you know, you're gonna find this kind of dumb, but I'm a country girl. I'm quite different than you coming from Hong Kong, but I'm a country girl. And when I was a kid, we used to raise chickens and pigs. And eventually the slaughter time would come. And sometimes it, was always shocking to me how hard it was to kill an animal. That you know you'd have this plan that you're gonna cut the chicken's head off and then it would be dead and then you'd move on. But inevitably it would just be a nightmare because it didn't happen the way you'd want it to. It wouldn't be simple. And I think that happens a lot with human beings. I don't think they just they die like you would like them to instantly. And it turns into something that looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre when really that's not who we're dealing with. You know what I mean? There's a big difference between those two things, Rocky. Do you see what I'm saying? How something that's intended to be one way becomes something that looks much, much, much worse. And in an absence of an explanation that things went terribly wrong because of X, Y, Z, it looks so bad. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I mean, there's lots of analogies that can make sense here, right? I mean, there's all kinds of um, analogies that fit into all of our lives like this, right? Where we, where we intend for one thing to go on and it just 
maybe we keep saying the wrong things and it turns into, you know, someone's offended when really our intention was to apologize, you know, or in my case of trying to butcher an animal doesn't go smoothly and it turns into a big nightmare because it just didn't go the way we thought it would. The, the animal didn't cooperate. I, I, I mean, I don't know what happened there. I know you went there for a reason. I know you planned it for a really long time. You won't tell me why you bought those things, that hatchet and those gloves and that hat. You won't tell me why, so I'm going to assume the worst. I'd like an explanation for those things. you the Canadian Tire video as well as the bus video which is just really basically earlier in the day. I've told you about um, the vehicle. Right? Coming out of the vehicle, walking up the street, throwing the keys in the garden, doubling back, up French Street, through the houses. I mean, that stuff's irrefutable. And you have nothing to say to that. Okay. So let's move on. Rocky. What do you want to see next? Tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me what would convince you. Like, are you still on the fence about whether um, you're, like, we have good evidence against you? Are you still wondering about that? Because that's you, often a barrier for people. You're going to so often to me, I am sure. I assume. Say again? You're going to so often to me anyway, right? I'm going to what? Show all of them. I don't know. Yeah, sure. I will. Yeah. But I mean, I don't have to if you don't want to see it. You know, I, I just, I want to give you every opportunity to take some power and control here. I don't have to if I don't want to see it, but I'm forced to stay here, so I really don't have a choice anyway. Yeah, you do have to stay here. Yeah. Um, but um, it's not about that. That's, that's the stuff you already know exists. You already know that stuff. You, you knew that long before I did or any of these investigators did. You don't need me to show it. You know what's there. But what you, what you don't seem to be believing me about, Rocky, is that you have a great deal of power here to take control of how this happens now. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be charged, and this is very serious, and we have a lot of evidence. Um, and that none of that's going to change. What happened in that house isn't going to change, hon. What's going to change, what could change for you, is if you be independent here and take control of the situation and, and you control the pace at which it goes now and what happens now. You know, you haven't, you pointed out to me earlier, I was saying, how independent of you? You've come to Vancouver and you're looking for work and you said, no, I'm not independent. My parents are paying my rent. And I thought, okay, well, that's, that shows some honesty, you know, about who you are and exactly how independent you are or are not. So you're not independent. And I, I'm going to suggest from some of the things that you've said to me here today that you're not smart, you know, you're not independent, you know, you've been saying things that are really negative about yourself. Why are I, they I could say something positive. <laughs> yeah, like what? Uh, well, one don't say, I don't say something positive, just too well. 
But here, I want to say something positive about you. I want to be able to say something positive about you, Rocky. And that would be that you face this like a man. And you, you say. And you help me understand why this happened. I really want to know why this happened. I mean, I don't know if that man was ignorant to you or if this was entirely about getting some attention for yourself. I don't know. I don't know what... Uh, I don't know. I don't know why it happened. All I know is what happened. And I know you thought about it for a long time. I don't know if this is about video games affecting the way you think. Well, you so you don't believe that. Well, okay. But help me. I want to understand this. Because what I'm saying, Rocky, is you're the only one that could say why this happened and make this clear. Because what we have to do as a society together is make sure these things don't happen again. So if there is a breakdown in the parenting or in the society or in video game presentation or if you've been suffering from depression or some kind of mental illness for a long time, well then I'd like to hear about that. Because if you need some help and if there are things that, that were triggers for you that caused frustration to build, then maybe we can identify that in other young men. Because I don't know if you're watching the news, you told me earlier you don't watch the news, but there's a lot of frustration in this world. There are a lot of people doing things that are really bad, like what you did. And I, myself, as a police officer, I've always wanted to prevent that stuff. So I need help from people like you, who've been through it. Nobody can crawl inside your head, Rocky. You gotta bring it. You gotta help me, cause I don't. I don't think you want this to happen again to some other young man. I don't think so. I know you don't, cause I, I think you. You found yourself now. You're you're in a you're screwed. You're gonna be charged with murder times two. That's it. I mean, I'm gonna keep showing you evidence, cause there's a lot more and it's a lot heavier. But what I'm saying is that you have an opportunity here to be independent and be a man and to take responsibility like a man. And I don't think you've done that in your life ever. I don't think so. You know, your parents are still paying your rent, bro. Right? I mean, and I think that's what this is about. What is it about? Say. So Rocky, when I tell you that, that there's lots of young people going through what you went through, you know, we work with social groups and things like that of people, young men like you, who are going through frustrating times, depression, frustration with their social, their place in society. They don't feel like they have anything. Uh, just to careful. I, I remember I said I will stop moving job to pay my rent, right? Mm. Just not really using my parents' money to give me a life. So, well, I don't know. Maybe... Well, that, that doesn't change your parts of you anyway. No, no, I'm not telling you that's my point of view, Rocky. I'm telling you this is an idea. I'm wondering if this, and that's why I'm asking. Remember last time when I said, here, your attitude changed five weeks ago. Mr. Norton told us that. And you said, no, no, wait a minute. That was because of the internet. The 5G, the no G. 
I believe you. Whatever you tell me, I believe you at face value. And I'm going to write it down and I'm going to bring it back to the investigators. So I'm putting it to you. Is this the problem that you feel emasculated uh, or, or feel like you're not independent? I, you're telling me that's not the case. But I don't know what it is, Rocky. I'm just putting ideas out there so that you can help me understand this. Because I don't understand it. I'm afraid I don't want to talk about it. <sighs> I'm sure you don't. I, you know what? When I screw up, I sure don't want to talk about it. Let me change it. I have something to say. Well, you, that's not true. I know you have a lot to say. It's just that you don't want to say it. And that's fair enough. That's your choice. That's your choice. But I'm giving you the choice. I'm giving you the option. Because this option isn't going to be here forever, Rocky. Right? That's something that you have to understand is that eventually this, what we call a disclosure package, is going to go to the Crown Council, which is the lawyer who is going to prosecute you. And that's the story that's going to go forward. I don't know. Is that what you want? I don't think it is. And I and I think that you don't you don't know what that package looks like yet. But I'm gonna show it to you. You know, um let me ask you this. Do you remember not very long ago? Um I think maybe just a few days ago, less than a week ago. You were at the grocery store. Remember being at the grocery store and there was a girl there. She had a sore arm. Remember that? She had her arm in a sling and she couldn't get her bottle open. You remember that? I can see from your face that you're lighting up. You can remember that very well. Well, you were a nice guy. Nice is not good here. Well, listen. Those investigators are hunting. Hunting a hunter. Right? Touche. Would you expect them to do less? Cast your mind back to that house, brother. Cast your mind back to what you left behind. Nice? I'm being nice. But that woman with the sore arm, that was a policewoman. What did you do? You did one of these. Remember that? Do you know why you did that for us? And why we had you do that? What do you think? Nothing to say. You have something to say? Nothing to say. Okay. Well, the reason we had you do that for us, Rocky, was we were looking for your DNA. Do you understand DNA? Uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, do you know? <laughs> okay, you know, you understand what DNA is. D I'll, I'll tell you, DNA is like a fingerprint that each person in the world uh, has in their cells, in their skin cells, in the epithelial from their mouth, which is what we gathered from you, uh, from the blood, from semen, hair follicles, these kinds of things, okay? And so when somebody has their DNA, there's nobody on the planet that has your same DNA, right? You, you are the only one. And so the reason that we wanted your DNA, I'll show it to you just so you can understand it more clearly. Rocky, because I feel this oozing mistrust of you. I just don't want you to not believe me when I see something. You understand the police are not allowed to lie to you, right? Did you know that? Mm, I that. Yeah, it's true. We're not allowed to lie. Mm -hmm. So, just so you know. Um, okay, here. 
Let's look at this report. Glasses. I can't okay. see. Anyway, I have a DNA report here, and I'm going to show you what it means, uh, why we would gather your DNA. Take your time. Pardon? Take your time. Okay, thanks. That's kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go anywhere. <laughs> no, you can't. Let me have my moment to get my glasses. And I oh. Stand by, brother. Oh. There they are. Fabulous. Let's go back. Mm, let's go back. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> Why? What do you think it says? I don't want to say any of them anyway. Well, it's not difficult. Let me explain it to you in lay terms. Um, what these reports basically say is that when Mrs. Ma Jones was taken to the autopsy, mm -hmm. what they did is they, they took fingernail clippings from her fingers. And then what they did is they did a DNA analysis under her fingernails. And so what they found was a male profile. So then what we had was we had this mm -hmm. No, oh, it doesn't matter. Sorry about this. There's so many little things going on. Um, so what we had, Rocky, just to put the whole thing in, in context for you, is we had this scene with two people who passed away. Uh, our forensic identification people spent days and days and days at that house analyzing blood, blood spatter, all kinds of things at that house. Uh, we found that hatchet at the scene. One of our investigators found the serial number on that hatchet and found out that Canadian Tire is the only place that sells that. And then Canadian Tire pointed out, hey, this is the only sale of that hatchet. We'll show you the video. So they showed us that video of you uh, buying the hatchet the hat that happens to be the same hat that we found I in the house under the kitchen table. And there were glove patterns on the walls that, that indicate that those are the gloves that were used in this, this murder. So there we have your image. We didn't know who you were at that time because, of course, you paid cash, right? So we just had your face. So what our investigators did very cleverly is they put a big box around the neighborhood because we knew you had driven that car, or, you know, that car was uh, rather, it was driven right near your house, and the keys were thrown in the yard, and then, the, you know, the, this running through the houses. Uh, and so we put a big box around this neighborhood, including the place where the car was parked. And we just set surveillance there for weeks, watching, 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 showing our surveillance people your image from the Canadian Tire, right? We said, here's the guy we're looking for. He's got the exact same items that we find at the, at the uh, murder scene. So they're out there day after day after day, and finally, guess what happened? It was Christmas in October. There, there's the guy we see at Canadian Tire. We see him walking. And you know where we saw you walking to? We saw you walk, I'm gonna take a Coke. He yeah. said you didn't want it. Yeah, I'm gonna drink a Coke. So our clever investigators, spot you and where did you go but you went to the bank of montreal so of course as soon as you left they go right in there capture your image again and capture your name and so now we knew who you were 
And so now we're still setting surveillance to try to find out where you live. So eventually, of course, they just followed you back to your house. So now we know who you are, we know where you live, but we're still not quite sure because we aren't, you know, we think it would be quite a coincidence that the person who bought a hatchet the same as the one at the scene, you know, gloves, same as the pattern at the scene, and the uh, hat, same one at the scene, would be living in the same neighborhood. What are the chances of that? But still we had to be sure, right? So when Mrs. Ma Jones went for her autopsy and had her fingernails clipped and there was a nailed DNA profile underneath her nails, well, we just knew we had to get your DNA and see if it matched the, the, the DNA under her fingernails. And so there you were, giving us your DNA at the grocery store. So that was sent in on an emergency basis. And guess what, it matches. I think it says something like one in 19 billion chance that it's not you. So that's impossible. It's you. And they have you on DNA. Do you want to see the report? I don't understand that. You don't understand what? The report anyway. Rocky, it's over. Don't forget, that's just part of the DNA. That's just the emergency DNA that we had. There are pools of blood outside that house trailing down. We have to analyze all that here. But your DNA is underneath her fingernails. What are you gonna do about it? Rocky, this is awful. It's awful for you. Are you shocked? Or did you know we were coming? I have nothing to say. Little well, Rocky, come on. Come on, Rocky. That just can't be your response to this. It can't be. It's so unfair to those people. An explanation is really required for you to maintain your humanity. What's next? That's it, bro. Your DNA is underneath her fingernails. No, I mean, I mean, why are you? What was, was now? Are you going to show me more evidence, or are we done? No, we're not done. Okay. What are we gonna do here? You are uh, you you you. <laughs> you hope you're holding me. <laughs> you should say. What are we gonna do? So Rocky, I've asked you for an explanation why you bought those things two weeks before these people died. And what's your explanation? I see. I've told you that um, your image is seen uh, after this incident with that backpack neighborhood. Your DNA is under the victim's fingernails. This is, this really requires an explanation because I don't know why. I mean, I, I wondered if it was because you felt powerless in the world. I wondered if it was because you had an ax to grind with that man. There's a reason why this happened, Rocky. Why is it? It can't be just that you said, you know what, I'm gonna kill some people today and it's gonna be that guy. Is it? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, 
I don't think that this is the way you want it to go down. I don't think this is what would be right if you let this be the only thing that people see, is all of this evidence leading up to your capture. And it is culminated in a DNA hit that is irrefutable. It's irrefutable that your DNA is underneath that woman's fingernails. I just wanna know why. But what's your biggest fear, Rocky? What are you most afraid of? I don't want to talk about it. Do you feel bad? Are you scared what your parents are going to think? Do you care what they think? I don't know. I can't tell. What do you think they're going to say? What do you think your brother's going to say? Are you worried about that? I mean, some people don't care what their family thinks. I don't know your position. If you love them, you respect them, you think they're going to be disappointed or sad, or and some people don't care what they think. Some people do things like this to, to mess with their family. I don't know. I've heard every kind of reason for these kinds of things. And with you, I, whenever I suggest something, you kind of give me the, you know, the... Oh, the, just don't worry about that. Don't worry about what? I, I need to understand this. I don't think that's necessary. Well, it is for me. It is for you too, I think. I have nothing to say. Right. Please don't laugh at this. There's not. Uh, there's not anything on your mm -hmm. Have you ever been diagnosed with any learning disabilities? What do you mean learning disabilities? I don't know, like <laughs> dyslexia or anything like that. I don't. I, I don't, don't see that in I you don't because. Know what that is. Oh, okay. So that means that you haven't been that you're good. Do you think that you have problems that are internal? Some people, when they're in this position, Rocky, they, they describe to me that they have felt like there was something going on inside of them for a long time that they couldn't control. I don't know if that's true for you. That it's entirely about them. It had nothing to do with these people. I don't know. I know that when we went around, and one thing that we do in the early stages of something like this is we study the victims really well, because usually the victims are murdered by somebody who um, is somebody they know, is a neighbor or an ex-friend or something like that. And so we, we did a lot of study about these people, and, and we learned a lot about them and their relationship. and that that guy was not really a nice man to that woman. And a lot of her friends thought that, you know, he might be part of the problem. And so, um, you know, I just keep, in my mind, keep going back to the fact that if he offended the lady at the grocery store and he offended the lady at the liquor store where he went twice a day because he had a liquor problem, Maybe he came across your bow and was ignorant to you or set you off on a bad day. I don't know. But he did not impress people as a nice man. So I just, if that's a factor, I think that goes.
goes a long way to put you in a different light. And I think you should be worried about that, about how people will perceive you, how this family will perceive you. I want them to forgive you one day. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that's happening tomorrow, but one day, So I'd sure like to understand this, Rocky. I mean, is it something that's going on with you internally? I have nothing to say. That's been building in you a long time? Can I remain silent? <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. You, you gotta do what's best for you, Rocky. I, I don't think that's what's best for you, but you know, you're an intelligent person. You can figure that out for yourself. I think what's best for you is to regret it. Tell me you regret it. Tell me you wish you could go back six weeks. Go see, I don't know, fly home, go see your brother, do anything but this. I mean, don't you think you wish you could turn back time? I think we all do. I know I wish I could in my life at times. I mean, that kind of talk goes a long way to help people heal. And it helps people relax in their neighborhoods, right? If they understand what the impetus was, what caused things to happen, they, they can move on. I mean, you don't seem like a scary guy to me, Rocky. I mean, are you a scary guy? That's not... <laughs> that's not... I would... That's not for me to decide. Well, you can decide that. That's another thing that you have a lot of power in. You can have a lot of power in deciding what other people see. And so far, this is all they see. Uh, that's not, that's not what you want, man. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Rocky, you can see that the evidence is overwhelming. It is overwhelming that you planned this, you waited two weeks, and then you, you did this thing for whatever reason. I don't know what you were doing in there. I don't know if you intended it to go this gruesomely. I want to hope and, and say you didn't. I want to hope, I, I want to hope you went in there to take something. And it just went grossly wrong. That's what I want to hear. That's what I hope is true. I only want to hear the truth. Let me be clear about that, Rocky. But I just can't, I just can't put it to rest in my own head. I need to sleep at night too, you know. And you just don't seem like a scary guy to me. How did this happen? What happened to you? I have something to say. Sure you do. You have a lot to say. Like I said to you earlier, I said, these things, they just don't happen. And, and inevitably, I mean, I've talked with dozens of people like you who are in this position, Rocky. and. The reasons are always so different and so, I, I can't believe the impact that, that the person in your shoes has at this stage of the game on healing for the victims, family, healing for the community. I'm not kidding. I talked with a guy once who he'd stabbed somebody to death 
and um, you know, in court, at the whole thing went on, and and he pleaded guilty, and he had told us what happened, and and he was very contrite, meaning he felt bad about what he did, and he did a lot for that family to help them heal and sleep at night. Because when something like this happens to your family, you don't sleep at night. Maybe forever. So you have a lot of power to give people some comfort. I think you owe it to them even. You know what I'm saying? You get what I mean? When somebody is uh, tries to make amends, that it, it definitely helps people. Do you have anything you want to say to your family? My family? Yeah. You mean you want to contact them? Yeah, we are contacting them. Well, you, you are doing that anyway. Mm-hmm. We have to. Oh. Do you want us to tell them anything? <laughs> you are going to tell them anyway? I don't know what they're going to say yet. Yeah. What do you want us to say? Does it upset you to hear that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, Rocky, this kind of thing doesn't stay under a bushel. This isn't a theft under, son. Of course they're going to know. Are, are they to blame for any of this? For what? For this. I don't know what you say. Rocky, everybody's going to know what happened, and everybody's going to know what your reaction has been in this room tonight. I want them to know that you feel bad, and that you wish it didn't happen at the very least. I wish you could tell me what happened so that we can keep our eyes out for other young men that go through this. I wish you'd help us with that. That's a decent thing to do. It's a polite thing to do. How's this gonna end? Like, when? It's never going to be over. No, I mean this. I don't know. Today. Okay, this is, um, this is bigger than you. I want you to consider what the world needs from you. Once you've done something like this, Rocky, you owe a big debt to this world. Do you understand that? When something like this happens and somebody screws up, they owe the world. Two people have died. And you can begin to make that up to, the, to your karma, and to the world, and to this family if you start today. This opportunity isn't going to be here forever. That's what you have to think about, is that this here is very clear. None of that's going away. There's nothing any of us can do about it to erase it or to make you less guilty in it. There's all of this evidence. And I'm not even talking about it all. I'm just really showing you the highlights to show you how we got you know, where we went. It 
and yeah. nothing's going to change any of that. That is what it is. Not talking about that isn't going to make it go away. It isn't going to take that DNA out from underneath her fingernails. It isn't going to take that DNA off that top that you cracked open for us. At the grocery store, you know what I mean? That's all in evidence now. The Crown is aware of it. But now it's just the second half of the story. Well, let me say this, this is only a third of the story. I think there's a big third before this happened that we gotta talk about. And then there's the big third about what you're gonna do about it for other people. I'm not sure, do you care about other people? Do you care about them moving forward and doing well? No. If I lose, I don't think there's any what. I don't care about that. I'm interested in what you're saying. Uh, I don't understand anything. I, I don't think, have nothing to say. I think that what you are on the verge of saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's nothing that you could do or say that would erase this. And and you're right about that to an extent, Rocky. But one thing that I'm always part of is the aftermath of these things. What goes on with families afterwards and what goes on with people like you afterwards. About how you, you heal yourself and become somebody who'd never do something like this again. I mean, that's a big part of the question here. Is this going to happen again? And that's part of the question. And if, if you feel that that's not possible, I'd like to know why. And if you feel like it is possible, how do you think we can, can deal with it so that it doesn't happen again? I have nothing to say. Just answer. You're sorry for what? Just answer for. I have nothing to say. Is there anything you want to say to your mom? What? Is there anything you want to say to your mom? Nothing specifically. No. You, you already told that, right? They're going to, yeah. Yeah. Do you love your mom? Yeah. Well, just so you know, this is um, this is going to be in the media tomorrow. I don't understand media, but oh, media, oh. The media. Oh. So they're going to hear all that. Okay. Is there a message you want to get to them? I don't know say. Is this going to cause some embarrassment for your family? Sure it is. Are you worried about that? I have nothing to say. <laughs> Do you think your parents predicted this? Because I think when kids have troubles socially or however, the parents sometimes, they know there's something wrong. Did your parents notice there was something wrong when you were young? Hon, I don't know what you think that you're guarding. I don't know what it is. 
I know you think, I don't know, if you, I think you think if you're mute that this isn't going to go forward or that this doesn't exist. But that's just not true. It is. Period. What's the procedure? Well, the procedure is easy, you know. We talk. We figure out what happened. We figure out why it happened. And then we can study that and learn from it. And, and help other people. No, I mean, what's the procedure? Are you going to submit to the court? Like, like when? Or any that they will vote this, this thing will go to the media? What? I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be... I just want to know the... the I want to make sure that everybody sees the whole picture, Rocky. Not just this. Can you understand my position? Like, I want to be a humanitarian to you. I want to give you the power to not just have people look at this. That's not fair. There's something else going on and I'm sure of it. There's something else inside of you. I don't want to say kid, but you know what I mean? You're so young, Rocky. I have a son your age. I have a son 10 years older than you too. You know, like what is happening to you? Help me. I don't want this to happen to my son. Why do you think this happened? I, say. I really, I really want you to know something that I, I perceive you as a victim in this too. There's three lives lost that day. And you know you don't believe me. You're looking at me like, yeah, right lady, whatever. I know that's what you're thinking. No. Well, what are you thinking? Share with me. Like, I am being absolutely honest with you. Yeah. Like, but that's not important to you. What is important to you? I don't want to talk about it. Tell me what's important to you. It doesn't have to be about this. Tell me what's important to you. You can't do it all night, right? I'm here for you, whatever you need. Honey, you can't keep this bottled up. It's not good for you. Is it all the evidence you yeah. or um, uh, is all, or uh, mostly the highlight already? That's the highlights, yeah. Okay. The DNA under the fingernails is the... Don't need much more than that, right? Get some grass. Have a dinner. No. I'm gonna sit with you. I think you need company. Mm, no. No thanks. <laughs> Husband? Children? No. Oh. Calls. Oh, information. Contacting my relatives. Leave it inside you. Anyway, 
I could make this end. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's not going away. It's not going to end anytime. I mean, this is going to be your life for a little while. But I'll tell you, there's no. one way to make the uh, anxiety lessen and the guilt lessen, the feelings about it lessen. You can do a lot to make yourself feel better. Well, I didn't ask about that. I just. <laughs> You stare at me, it's kind of, well, boring. <laughs> well, I guess if I hadn't heard that before, I would be offended, but... Yeah. Heard that a lot? <laughs> and you're still doing it. Okay. You well, you know, anyway. Rocky, it's just... These things are... This is very important to me. This is what I do, and, and those guys are doing all the gathering of this evidence. They're the ones that are hunting to capture the person responsible, and they've done that. They've done their part. And now I'm here more on the social side of things. Okay. There's been a, something terrible in the universe has happened, right? I mean, some kind of stars didn't line up. Right? I mean, you have to admit that something has gone terribly wrong. Of course it is. Someone's being murdered. Why? I have nothing to say. I don't believe that's true. I mean, so many times people say that for a long time, but they... They regret not taking their opportunity to, um, and, and sometimes what's happened is so, so awful, and that they're, the reason it happened is so awful, the person can't, can't talk about it, or doesn't want to talk about it, but those are especially the times, Rocky, when you should talk about it, because if people understand what's going on with you, they can have empathy for you. They can have some understanding. Your parents will have some understanding, perhaps. And you know, I can be that conduit to make sure that people know that this file doesn't go forward just with Rocky's DNA is under the victim's fingernails. Rocky's DNA is on the knife. I didn't mention the knife, but there's a knife there, and it has your DNA, DNA on it as well. It's a little orange knife, like a little ceramic bladed knife. Do you want to see a picture of it? It was on the front step of the house. Well, there's lots of little things like that that I haven't mentioned because they're... They're penultimate to the um, the DNA under the fingernails, right? It's not as compelling to anybody looking at it. Like I'm dying to know why you left those blades on the front lawn. What happened? How come the hat is left in the house? I don't know why those things happen. I'm super curious. Was it just so upsetting and you were so full of adrenaline and you were just frantically running around that you just forgot them? Or were you planting them there? That's what I think so. I felt like, like this scene was so obvious that you were trying for some attention. That's what I thought. I thought you were crying out for attention and saying, I want the world to notice me. But you're making a face like that's not true, but... No, 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 I... No, no, no. Well, tell me, I want to answer your question. I don't know what you say. 
Ask the question, Rocky. It's okay. If I can answer, I will. Yeah, I want to ask a question. Yeah. Is there really the next to kill people with dry attention? Yeah, there's lots of people who do it. There's like two sets of people this week. One in New York and one in, gosh, Alabama or down south. They do it just for attention. And, and when I saw this scene with some obvious evidence that's obviously going to be full of your DNA, I don't know why it was left there. I have nothing to say. I mean, that, that theory obviously offends you, but I don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to make sense of what happened there. And without you, I can't really do it. I can only say, I know Rocky's responsible. I know Rocky's going to be charged with murder. That's all I know. Some people do this kind of thing to draw attention because they feel neglected by their parents, they feel neglected by their family, they don't have any friends, they're lonely, and they want some attention. I don't know. Go out then. <laughs> Go out, meet people. Mom. Why kill people? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. What is a good reason? This is getting hard. What is a good reason, Rock? Excuse me. Because there are good reasons to kill people. Is there? Yeah, there is. I mean, it doesn't make them lawful, but there are good reasons to kill people, right? There's war, and there's revenge, and somebody's sleeping with your wife, and somebody insults somebody else uh, on a very serious level. I don't know. Some robbery sometimes is, is why people do it. I mean, those aren't lawful reasons, but they, they are reasons. What is the reason? No, well, you come on. What's the reason for this? I, I have no reason. How come? How can you look at that and say, Ah, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I know you got my DNA under her fingernails, but fuck her. Who gives a shit about her? Who gives a shit about this guy? I'm good. Like, how is that? Like, how are you doing that? How are you sitting there saying, no thanks? Because that's what it feels like, Rocky. It feels like you're saying, yeah, no, I'm fine. Are you fine? If my attitude makes you feel bad, I apologize. Well, it's not about your attitude making me, uh... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if your family is going to be able to shed some light on this, Rocky. I, I would sure like for you to shed some light on it. I'm afraid you can't get anything. Well, that's up to you. I mean, it, it is entirely up to you. Do you visit with your grandmother much? What? Do you visit with your grandmother much? Grandmother? Uh, no, often. No. Not very much. Toronto? Is that no, right? Toronto. I want you to consider everybody in this thing, Rocky. Everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you have a family that cares about you. Imagine the impact of this on them and knowing that you opted to say, no, I'm good, nothing to see here, I'm fine. Do you think that, I mean, there's this, which is bad enough, that's done, there's nothing that can be done about that. But now to know that your son sits mute in the face of all this, what kind of boy did they raise? Are you worried about the impact on them that will have? I don't know what your relationship is with them. I mean, some people hate their parents, and so they don't really give a shit if it makes their parents look bad or if it makes their parents look like they raised someone who doesn't care about anybody else. I don't know, but I'm not sure where you're at on that. I mean, mistakes happen, you know? Even mistakes as awful as this happen. Like I said before, these things, they start out as one thing and they spiral into a big mess and they're not intended to go like that. That's, that's what I want to believe. I really do want to believe that, Rocky. I want to believe that this is not what it was supposed to be. And now that it's all said and done, and all the forensic evidence has been collected, that when you have to face your family, your grandmother, that they're going to say, well, that's horrible. At least at the end of the day, he was a man about it. And he did his best to make it up at the end of the day. You can only do what you can do. And I know what you're thinking. I mean, you've expressed it already that there isn't, you know, that you, you feel like this is a, like a, such a terrible thing that there's nothing you can do to make it up. Well, there are small things that you can do, Rocky, that are within your power to ease pain for your family, ease pain for this family, ease worries of, of everybody in the community, help people who, who help young men like you who are going through that period, that awkward period of 22 to 26 where young men feel lost and do bad things. You have a lot of power here to help the future. And I want you to, to take that step.
just go in and I am getting tired. Yeah, I know. It, it is exhausting to think about this stuff, Maki. It is tiresome. But you have to think about your grandmother tonight. And you need to think about your parents. And I don't know if you love them or have a beef with them or not, but you need to give them a gift, which is my son screwed up, but at the end of the day, he did the right thing. I want to understand this, and I know this isn't all your fault. I know it's not all your fault. I have nothing to say. Rocky, I want you to consider everyone, not just yourself. And really, this is about you too. This isn't just about what your parents are gonna have to face to their neighbors and friends. I want them to be able to say, my son is in recovery. He is doing everything right now. He's sorry for what he did. Yes, he screwed up, but we love him, we support him. He's going to do the right thing. And this is what is best for you too. Don't tell me you're sleeping well after that. But the first step into getting back into having a quiet mind is getting this out of you and getting some help with some psychologist or something like that. You can't do this by yourself, Rocky. Like, I'm here to help you tell this story so that people will understand. Hon, you can't, you can't let this story be the way it is. I'm afraid there's nothing I can say. Well, there's a lot you can say. There's nothing you can say that would bring these people back to life. That's true. But there's a lot you can say to help people feel better, help people move towards forgiving you. And that's not going to happen overnight. But today's the first day. Today's your chance. your chance, Rocky. And I know it's painful, honey. I've done this with lots of people and it's painful. But it's always makes you feel better. You know, I'm always just tired. Yeah, well I'm just tired. It's exhausting to hear this stuff. It, it really the adrenaline rush of the whole day and then to slowly get the evidence revealed to you is mind blowing. I get it. That's normal. Absolutely normal. These are the stages that people go through, Rocky, and you're no different than anybody else. At the end of the day, everybody does what's best for them. That's the truth. And once the the evidence is so clear. There is no, there is no loss to you. The only benefit is to explain it or to be sorry for it and to do things that can help your parents get over it. And I know you want to do that. I can tell that's bothering you. You have a niece and nephew that are going to see that you did the right thing. She's just 
three years, three years old, four years old. Yeah, but they're gonna grow up. They're gonna grow up, Rocky, and they're gonna say, yeah, I gotta watch out, I gotta be careful, I gotta make sure I don't make these same mistakes, because you're gonna teach them. And you're gonna teach them how to face their mistakes. And you're gonna teach them how to be good people by handling this property. And I'm sure that is important to you. Nothing to say. Just go home. Sorry. It doesn't work that easily. Yeah, I know. So, uh, I'm just suggest. Yeah, well, a lot of people think that they can just, um, you know, that, that life that you had where you got to say, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm not going to do. I mean, things change. Okay, I'm just gonna pop out because apparently they've spoken with your brother. Okay. And so I'd like to get some information from him. Okay. Can you bring me a water bottle? Yeah, sure. Excellent. You're welcome. Promise me you'll think about these things. Think about your family, okay? Oh, I got water right here. Oh, thanks. Welcome. Let me know, Rocky, if there's any of this evidence you'd like to peruse more closely, uh, like the DNA reports or okay. anything like that. Let me leave you with something. Oh. Okay. Yep. Uh, Rocky, you want to come for a breath fresher? Yeah. Just going to get some uh, fresh air into you. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, you got one there?
Um, that in your shoes, like the adrenaline's pumping, and maybe you don't get a chance to absorb it all and understand what's happening. So what I've done uh, is, uh, Rocky, I've put things up so that you can understand how the investigation built and uh, led up to things. Some of these things are out of chronological order because... Um, we went backwards in time, like I told you, right? Because what happened was, of course, do you want to come and see these things just so it's I clear to you? I want to. <laughs> oh, come on. It'll make it clear to you, Rocky. Intelligent people want to know what's happening to them. No, I'm only connected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Like, you keep saying you're not, hun, but you are. I know you are. Well, but anyhow, at the crime scene, this is what we saw outside, was this knife here. Um... This knife ultimately was uh, analyzed. Uh, swabs were taken off of there by our forensic identification people. And uh, later that was, um, it was found that there was male DNA on there. And when we found that, we didn't, we didn't know who you were yet, but we had this DNA profile. Also, of course, was, was the hatchet that was uh, outside in the yard. Here it is where, where it was sitting. And this was, probably what caused you the most difficulty right here because what uh, our investigators did was they looked at this coding here and this coding told them that this instrument was bought at Canadian Tire. So off they went to Canadian Tire and said, hey, when's the last time you sold this hatchet? And they said, well, right here. Here it is. And not only that, but a hat was sold hat right there, a hat similar to that. Anyway, that hat right there was sold, as well as these gloves, similar gloves to these ones. That was on September the 13th, and of course, we have this person here connected to that purchase. We didn't know who you were yet, but we had this image of you. Here you are making the purchase here. You didn't even wait for your receipt. But anyway, you know, it's a computer system. They keep their own receipt. So we had this image, and what we did was we, we went uh, into the neighborhood, and we just set up surveillance everywhere. And soon enough, one of our very super bright guys said, there he is. And they followed you to the bank where you used your bank card. And then we went into the bank and said, who was that? And they said, that's Rocky Cam. So now we had your name. We knew where you, who you were. Uh, and so then we could start to investigate who you were and we followed you back to your house. So we knew where you lived then. So that's how the investigation got started. And believe me, Rocky, it has just only begun. I mean, we do have overwhelming evidence, uh, but it has only just begun. This backpack here that we see you drop off at Canadian Tire, we later see it in the vicinity of this truck here. I verily believe you drove that truck away from the house and uh, your image was captured when you locked the truck and the lights came on. There was blood evidence in that truck. I know it looked like you tried to clean it or wipe it or whatever, but there was there was too much. I, I'm un, unclear about exactly where that forensic evidence is going, but the um, the house was full of forensic evidence, so there are certain things that are taking a little longer. So then here we are. We have Rocky Cam. We know who he is. We have evidence at the scene, and we also, you'll notice right here, 
this is the autopsy uh, report, and here they're taking fingernail clippings from Mrs. Ma, Ma Jones. Okay, so we took those fingernail clippings, and they analyzed them, and this is the uh, notes from the undercover operator who took your DNA when, with the bottle when you opened it for her at the grocery store. These are her notes here. You can read them if you like. So we took that DNA and we compared it to the fingernail clipping DNA. And we get this report here that says, that's you. That water bottle was full of the suspect's DNA and it matched what was under the fingernails. You can take this down, Rocky, if you want, and look at it really closely for yourself so you can rest your mind that here it is, it is what it is. How was your break? Did you have a chance to think? Did you have a chance to think? Yeah, I was reading, I'm not gonna get any sleep tonight, am I? I didn't say that. <sighs> and by the way, Rocky, it's 7.30. Mm -hmm. It's 7.30 in the evening. I don't want you, like, come on. You're 25 years old at 7.30 at night. I think you're okay. No, I'm not saying I want to sleep now. I'm just getting the feelings. Hmm? I'm just getting the feelings. It's a lot. And you know what compounds the problem, Rocky, is if you look at that photograph there beside your shoulder there, that's Mr. Jones earlier that evening. You see him, he's all hunched over there, he's got a walker. He's quite disabled. That's another layer to this. That really needs an explanation from you. You know what I mean? Before we were talking, I took a break, Rocky, to go and find out what they learned from your brother. And um, I, I want you to know that that is something that we always do is we always try to find out as much as we can, of course, about somebody because we're scared and we don't understand. So we try to learn something, right? We do everything we can. We go to Facebook, we go to friends, we go to family, we go to neighbors, and we try to find out what went wrong here. And um, your brother wanted to pass on that he loved you. Okay. Do you love him back? Of course I do. Good. The reason I'm asking, you know, Rocky, is that this is a lot for a family to um, understand. And it's, it's going to be as clear to them as it is to you. And it's going to be painful for them, and I would like to be able to tell them the other half of it, that you're remorseful. And that you're sorry about, you know, what you're doing for the family. <coughs> you need the Heimlich? What? You need the Heimlich? You don't know what the Heimlich is. I don't know. It's when someone's choking, you give them a... Hmm. No, just... Down the wrong path. 
you, you understand where I'm going with that, Rocky, is that this is very painful. This is going to be very painful for a lot of people. And a lot of pain can be alleviated by seeing you do the right thing from here forward. You know what I'm saying? You have a lot of, you have a big family really, who's, who's going to be aware of everything. Are you worried about that? Of course I am. Well, good. But you have, you've not showed it anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, that is, that can't be helped. I mean, that is done. I'm sorry about that, but that no. is done. That is not my doing, hon. If I could go back and save you from all of this, I sure would. I sure would. But don't you want to send the message that you aren't... I don't know what. I don't know what your family is going to think. I don't know them. What do you think they're going to think? Family don't always know what they think. Yeah. It's Especially. Funny. I don't even know. Well, that's good to know because these things do happen and the person in your chair often doesn't know why it happened. They often are confused by their own behavior. <laughs> Some people are even scared of themselves, Rocky. You know, some of them don't even know if they are able to control themselves. I don't know if that's you, but... What do I? I want you to tell me what happened. What do you know about why you did this? I mean, if it's confusing to you, just say. I mean, that's all right. That you don't understand every part of it. What started it? Nothing to say. Rocky. I know that it, it's something that you need to get out of you. You need to protect your family from the next parts of this and you know I don't I don't mean that you know I just don't know what what you need to make you understand that there's a lot of people that are going to be affected by what you do here tonight like your grandmother and your parents and you know there's a lot of a lot you can do. I know you feel like it's a hopeless situation and it doesn't matter what you do and you feel like fuck. But you don't understand this yet because you're in the pit of it and you're in the muck of it. But there, it, these things are very helpful to people to know that you've tried to fix it the best you could even though it's, it's, it's big. But you've tried. At least you've tried. I know you're trying, but I really couldn't say anything. Well, Rocky, that is certainly your choice. But I really think when you face all of this, that down the line when you are facing this for real, you're going to be wishing you'd handled it like a man at the time. And tomorrow when you're on the phone with your parents, you can be genuine when you say, I'm sorry, I did what I could. I mean, that's the important part now. People want to know why you did this. And maybe you don't know completely why. But there was some trigger, there was something that happened. And I don't know if you were had been experiencing some problems for some time in your own head? I don't know. 
Help me with that. Help me to understand it, Rocky. Trust what? I have nothing to say. I don't buy it. Yeah. You have lots to say. You, you look like you are full of things to say. Your face is twisted and you are anxious mm. and you feel sick. I can see it in your face. Many people feel sick in police station. And while they are in charge, never. Yeah, it's big. I don't know what your plan is. What is your plan? I mean, the police side of it is kind of done. I mean, they're they're going to continue to um, investigate. For instance, there were quite a few pools of blood outside uh, as the suspect left. Um, I don't know if that's just from dripping from the victim's blood or if that's your blood. I don't know what that is, but they're continuing to investigate that to find out what blood that is. I saw you look at your wrist just now. Is that where it was injured? No, I was just thinking the police earlier asked me about something about scars. Mm -hmm. No, this is my only scar. What is? I don't even it's see a scar. Yeah, it's because it's very long time ago. Okay. It's like I uh, was, what, very soon? I see a scar here. And here. Is it a scar? Yeah, I think so. Don't you think it is? It looks like a fingernail scratch to me. Where were you bleeding? Hmm? Where were you bleeding? Bleeding? Blood? You were bleeding when you left that place. What? Well, you were scratched, I know that, because uh, Miss Ma Jones had your DNA on There's her. nothing I would say. Rocky, you know you can't you can you can't put your head in the sand. I don't want this to be the way this ends. You know, I, I really I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine what your grandmother is going to think of this. Don't you want to relieve some pain for her? This is a big machine, and it's going to keep on going. We're going to keep gathering evidence, and it's not going to get easier or better. What can get easier and better is how your family feels about it, help, helping to them, for them to heal, helping them to understand you, having them know that while you did screw up, you did the right thing. I'm not kidding, Rocky. It's a big deal to come forward after something awful. It's hard. What I'm asking you to do takes a lot of bravery. And I know that. And that's why I'm being very patient and I'll sit with you as long as you need me to. But it takes a lot of bravery to to come forward and 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 Regret and be remorseful for what you did. <sighs> what 
so funny. No, nothing is funny. Just, no. I don't know how to handle like an anger or something like that. How, how to say that? I don't know how it It's not because I smell, smile, because not because it's funny. It's, I can do nothing about that. I could only sit in here and listen to you. Wait until you, well, lose your patience. I'm never gonna lose my patience. Yeah. Or you feel sleepy. Anyways. Really, Rocky? That's what you're thinking here? In the face of all this, that's what you're thinking about? I'm just gonna wear this woman out. Who cares? Do you care so little about what this what has happened here? Do you care so little about what people are gonna think of you? I've been charged a murder here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's start treating it like it's a serious situation, shall we? For you to sit there and go, I'm gonna wait for this woman to get sleepy. What? Really? That's your reaction to this? I don't want to do that. Do what? Like, you risk. Disrespecting her, but. Well, you're not disrespecting me, my friend. You're disrespecting these people. You're disrespecting yourself. You're disrespecting your parents and your grandparents and your brother. That's who you're disrespecting. But mostly yourself. I'm gonna sit here and wait till this woman gets sleepy. Yeah, I've axe murdered two people. Ah, I'm good. Is that what you're doing, Rocky? Come on. This old man right here is in a walker. What? There, you got to explain that. That's gross. He was an elderly, old, drunkard in a walker. Why did you do this? Why would you do this? You gotta explain it. And if it's something that's going on inside of you, and you're sorry about it, let's hear it. Because right now you look pretty cold. I'm gonna wait for this woman to get tired. I don't really care. I'm laughing through this whole thing. I'm grinning away. I don't really care. I don't care what my gra what my grandmother's gonna go through. I don't care what these people's kids and family's gonna go through. I'm good. I don't care that I'm a 25-year-old, able-bodied man, and that old guy is in a walker. I don't care. What was that? Are you implying you're out of shape? Like, so it's a fair fight? Is that what that was? Oh, look at me, I'm fat, I'm out of shape. So it's a fair fight for this old man? I don't think so, man. If that's, is that really what you're bringing to the table? I'm, a, I'm an out of shape gamer, so it's a fair fight. No. It's disgraceful. Yeah, this guy's a real asshole. Do you know who this woman was? She worked at the, um, woman. the woman you killed. Do you know who she was? She worked at GF Strong and she helped people like this lady here recover. She was an occupational therapist. Well, not very many people had many good things to say about him. This lady who was a they called her, a, I think she was a hero of medicine. She won multiple awards for the help that she'd given people. Did you know that? I'm saying. Rocky, did you know who she was? Why did you do that to her? People want to know if something happened between you and him and she walked in on it, because I know that's how it happened, 
I know she came home with the groceries and pow. I think she was unexpected to you. I don't think you meant to hurt her. But I'm only guessing. Mm -hmm. I want to hear it from you. Was she unintended? Didn't did you not expect her to come home? That makes a big difference, you know. Well, that guy is old. He was a jerk. I could see you having a conflict with that man. And I'd understand that. But if this was unintentional, that's important. That's an important part of the story. It's important, Rocky, and you know it. It's one thing for two men to go to battle, but this tiny lady, how do you explain that? I don't think that you thought she was gonna be there. I think that was a mistake. Am I right? I have nothing to say. Come on, Rocky. Look at this woman. You are insulting me. I'm what? Say that again. I have nothing to say. What did you say earlier? Nothing. Something about insulting you? Is that what you said? I'm insulting you? By implying that I want an explanation for why you killed this tiny lady? Elderly lady? You're 25 years old, Rocky. Why did you do that? Why did you do that, Rocky? Was she accidental? There's all kinds of evidence that supports the idea that you didn't intend for her to be home. That would mean a lot to me if that was not your intention to kill that lady. What was her role in this thing? What was her role in this thing, Rocky?
It's okay if you don't understand it yourself, you know. Because so far I don't really see why you do it. I don't understand the motive. They're not rich people. They don't have stuff. They live modestly. I think there was something wrong with you and you felt confused by it yourself at the time. I'd sure like to understand it. I'd like to be able to explain it to people. People like her family. People like your family. There's no downside to this for you. Let me just have you look around the room one more time. There's no downside for you to say, whatever the reason was, I needed money, so I went in there. I have no idea. I was having a, I, I just lost it. That man was rude to me and he pissed me off and I was just gonna do whatever. I don't know what the reason is, Rocky, but there's absolutely no downside to you telling me what that reason is. None. Because everybody knows that you did it. Everybody knows that you went in there. Everybody knows that you went into that store two weeks before and bought what we call as a kill kit. Without an explanation from you, that's a kill kit. There's no downside to talking about your feelings about this, that you feel sorry, that you wish you could go back. That that lady was an accident. That you didn't want her to be involved. I'd like to hear that from you. There's no downside, Rocky. All there is would be documenting the fact that you have empathy that you're taking the first steps towards being somebody who would never do this again there's no downside You hear what I'm saying, Rocky? That there's no downside? I hear every word. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Because the, the evidence is so overwhelming and it's just going to build and build and build because this is the kind of case that will take an entire team of forensic identification people. They'll be working on this case for months and months and months. There's so much blood. They'll be working on that case for months and months and months. I mean, if this went in a way that you did not intend, there's no way you intended to leave that on the front lawn. You must have been panicked, Rocky. I, 
I can't explain that. It, it's so obvious, and it seems as if you were leaving this, the, the one thing that we needed to find you. It was just that axe, right? That's what led us to you. And you left it on the front lawn. Why did you do that? Like, I, it's going around in my head that you did it because you wanted to be caught. I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. Sometimes when people are in distress and they do something terrible and they need some help, they do something drastic like this because they're reaching out and they need help and they need to be tucked away. They, they want to go to jail. That's how this case feels like to me. There's just so much evidence. I mean, heck, this thing happened five blocks from your house or something. Who does that? Did you want to get caught? Did you want to get caught, Rocky? Why did you leave those things there? Like a calling card. It feels like you're just screaming out for help with this thing. Like you wanted to tell everybody you're the most terrible person ever. Like I've been hearing you say all night in here, I'm not smart, I'm not this, I'm not in good shape. And this was just another thing for you to reassure everybody that you were terrible. I kind of say I'm handsome, right? What? I couldn't say I'm handsome, right? You couldn't? <laughs> That's... <laughs> well, I, just an example. Why would I, well, brag myself? Why would you brag on yourself? Well, you shouldn't brag on yourself, but you don't have to beat yourself up. To interpret it. That way, I never meant that. You just say you that way, bro. I think a bad opinion of yourself is part of what has happened. I think you can work on that stuff, and you got to start somewhere. start today. I mean, it'd be nice for you to be able to say you're brave. Because what I'm asking you to do takes bravery. To face people and say, I am desperately sorry. I will do everything in my life from this day forward to try to repair this. I know I can't do that. There's two lives lost. But I'm going to do everything in my life from this day forward to try to make this up in some way. Do you understand the power of that, Rocky? Uh, Do you 
you understand the power of what I'm saying? If you... Take this date and, and go forward telling everybody who knows you and is involved in this that I'm going to do everything I can to make this right, as right as I can. I, I don't see the downside in doing that, Rocky. It just makes people have faith. Ask you about this backpack and this sweatshirt. Where are they now, Rocky? I mean, I, you don't seem like a guy to me who has a lot of clothes and a lot of things. Somebody who has money and stuff. Where are those things today? Obviously, you like them. We see you in those those clothes um, on that day, on the 13th. We see you in those clothes uh, the night of the when those people died. How come you don't have them anymore? Where are they? Give them away. I don't know. What's your plan? Do you care about what your family is going to do with all this? When they see this lady, who probably could be your grandmother, maybe not quite old enough. sense to me. I wish we could have some understanding of why this happened. I mean, this is what people are going to wonder, wonder about. Your hat is right here. This isn't even the worst of it, is it? Rocky, does this make you feel anything? Honey, like, really? How do you think that's going to make your people feel? If you don't understand it yourself, it's okay, you know. I've said that to you before, but I mean, I don't know how you're looking at that and just, you know, you're shrugging it off. How are you doing that? You feel anything? You feel any regret about that? You don't? Sorry. That is a bad habit, my friend. Look at this. 
This is a bad habit. Yeah. I have nothing to say. Why not? There is absolutely no downside what do whatsoever. Hmm? What do you want to know? I want to know what, why you went in there. There's something I can't say. Yes, there's tons you can say. Tell me how you feel about it today. About what? About this. You ask me what I want to know, and I'm asking you, I want to know how you feel about it today. How do you feel about it today? You ask me what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I couldn't say anything. I know that you feel that way. And I appreciate you sharing that, that. That you feel this is so overwhelming that there's nothing you can say to make it up. I, I totally, totally... No, there's just, just nothing I could say. I know, there's nothing you can say to make this up, Rocky. Look at that hoodie, that backpack. Where is that today? I know you had that with you that night. We're able to see it on the video of you walking away back through the houses and whatnot. We see that backpack. I know you had it that night. Where is it now? Why would you get rid of that? Doesn't seem like it's anything you'd get rid of. Seems like you had it weeks and weeks ago. Where is it now? Doesn't really make sense in the world that you'd get rid of it unless it was full of blood. Sweatshirt, same thing. The reason I'm telling you that, Rocky, is that they. Of course, I've searched your house, and I told you that they would. There's a search warrant, and they're not finding any of that stuff. Rocky, when you say there's nothing that you can say about this, I know that, that it looks overwhelming and it feels overwhelming, and, and it is in terms of evidence and proving that you did this thing. You're very right about that. But I want you to talk to me about what happened. There's absolutely no reason not to try to garner some understanding and some empathy from people. If you just flipped out let me hear it. Let me understand what you were thinking about. This opportunity is going to come and go. You know that? You are not going to have another opportunity to, to apologize.
You are not going to save yourself from a murder charge by staying uh, and not explaining this. This is, this is it. The evidence is overwhelming. There is no downside. These chances come and go. And the way I don't want you to I don't want this to go forward the way it is, Rocky. It's too ugly. You just don't seem wicked to me. You seem <clears throat> I don't know, like a normal lost kid. Is there something else going on I don't know about? Was it mistaken identity? You went there looking for somebody else? There's just, there's just... <laughs> Rocky, I just, I don't know if you're, you're seeing clearly or if you understand how terrible it looks. An explanation would go a long way to assuage fears and make fe people feel better. I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions that we're going to answer. Like about where that backpack is and where that sweatshirt is. Or, you know, we usually find those things. I mean, we don't need them. Look around you. I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what your fear is. I don't know what you think will happen if, um, if you tell me what went on or why this happened. I don't know what you think is going to happen. The sky isn't going to fall. Your brother said he loves you no matter what. I think your mom and dad and your grandmother would be less embarrassed, I guess, if you were honest. know there's that pride thing and that you know it doesn't matter this that's going to be dashed a little bit but in order for them to be able to say well at least we raised a son who is going to face his mistakes like a man address something do something for himself for a change be independent Save the family that part of the embarrassment. Rocky, do you know what I mean? You know, I'll help you tell the story. I'm not going to leave you here to feel it alone, you know.
I can tell that you want to talk about this. I really can. And I really can assure you that you're going to feel better when you get it out, Rocky. A lot better. I mean it. I'm going to help you tell this so that it, it helps people and their families. Okay. You're just looking at me like you don't, you're not sure, but you know what? You have to admit that from the start to the finish, I've told you the truth. And I'm telling you the truth when I'm telling you that I'm going to help this part of the story go into the file. And it's not just this stuff in the file. Okay, Rocky, I promise you I will do that. I'll tell this story exactly the way you want me to tell it. I can tell you're torn in half inside and it's a difficult decision, but there is no downside. I've said it a hundred times. When a case is this complete, I don't know what you're protecting. What do you think will happen if you talk about this? Rocky, when people see something like that and they don't understand it and the person doesn't reach out and try to be understood, it just creates fear. I don't know if that's what you wanted at the end of the day was to be feared by your family and your neighbors. I don't know if that was ultimately what you're after. I feel like you wanted to be known because you made it so obvious, but what is it that you wanted? Can you tell me what you wanted? You asked me earlier what I wanted to know. Tell me something you'd like me to know.
just told me is that um, our investigators just returned from Calgary and they were talking uh, with your brother. What do you call your brother? Toddy? Yeah. Okay. So this. Hmm? Oh. Cho? Yeah. Okay. Well, he obviously cares about you a lot. He agreed to come in and talk with the police. Um, he said it took you a little bit longer to get your degree, but you had to learn English at the same time. So that's sort of understandable. No, actually, my English is very fine at that time. But it just is, unless you guess, I will close the house. So at got 7.0 points, points or otherwise you need to take some, I don't know, EAP course, that kind of, that kind of stuff, just, just okay. what body required. Okay. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? Yeah, just that your brother has come in to um, talk about you. He said that you were born in Hong Kong and you came to Calgary when you were 18. That your mom is a Canadian citizen. And that your sister came to Canada before him. And that you finished high school in Hong Kong. He doesn't report that you have any um, health problems. He said that you had a sore shoulder after the crash last year, but it's not lingering. He says you like to stay home and play video games. I guess we've already confirmed that. He said you got along well with your mom. And they didn't have a temper. He says in here that your grandmother is 92. For she's 93. I guess your mom is out visiting with her now, and uh, so um, the investigators are, are heading out to Toronto soon. Anyway, the, those are the notes, but your brother had a message for you. Do you want to hear it? Listen carefully because this computer's speakers aren't very loud. you to tell the police the truth. Does that have any impact on you, Rocky? I have nothing to say. I really have nothing to say. Todd, oh, that's not true. You have everything to say. I want you to feel better. I want you to do well after this. I don't want this to be the only thing in your life that defines you. You know what I mean? A lot of people are involved in things that they're horrified by and they change their lives. It, it's a line in the sand and they change their lives, Rocky, and you can do that too. This doesn't have to be the only thing that we think of you. Do you understand that? That there's still hope and there's still a chance for you to, to, to make something good come out of this? Your family's watching what you do from here forward. Your grandmother's watching what you do here forward. Come on. Rocky, you've got to do the right thing. I don't understand how, how this is difficult. It's very simple. It's very easy, actually. There is only one right thing to do. I have nothing to say. Hmm. Hmm. So Rocky, 
Rocky, one more time then. Why is your DNA on this knife outside the house where these people were killed? Can I have an explanation for that? I have nothing to say. Rocky, I want you to notice that there's um there's um an image of you here at the uh, Canadian Tire, and you are buying a hatchet, a pair of gloves, and a hat. The hatchet and the hat uh, are at the house, the exact same make and model as you bought, and the same hat that you bought, same brand, same logo, same everything is at the house where those people were killed. Do you have an explanation for that? I have nothing to say. This is the very hat rack where you chose that hat from, where you tried it on. Put your forehead on the brim of it. All of this analysis is yet to be done. I don't want to talk about it. Well, I'm sure you don't, love. I'm sure you don't. That's the easy way out. I'm just changing phrase. I have nothing to say. Fine. So, can you explain why that hat that is the same type of hat that you bought two weeks before this incident? is under the table with Mr. Jones' blood on it, the dead man's blood on it. Do you have an explanation? Do you have an explanation for this, Rocky? Maybe you were over there mowing their lawn. And all your things were left behind after you did some gardening. Were you there at that house? Do you have an explanation for this hat? Rocky, do you have an explanation for the hat? Do you have an explanation for the hat, Rocky? It was found under the kitchen table with Mr. Jones' blood on it. These were similar gloves to the ones that you bought right here on September 13th. These little rubber knobs on these gloves left patterns on the wall in blood. Do you have any explanation for that, Rocky? No? You're good? Nothing to say? Those images are clear as a bell. They're clear as a bell. Your backpack was even left here. We even have images of that clear as a bell. That backpack is seen later in the neighborhood, walking away from that car. Do you have an explanation for that? If you have one, it'd be nice to hear it now. It doesn't really make sense if you have a, an explanation that could explain that, you know, this has nothing to do with you. Now would be the time, wouldn't it? No? This hatchet here. 
here. <clears throat> it's the exact same make and model that you uh, bought on September the 13th. Sitting outside of the residence, blood all over it. Do you have any explanation for that? Rocky? No? This is your receipt. You didn't take the copy at the time, but this is your receipt from September 13th that shows the items that you bought being the hatchet, gloves, and hat. Thank you. Hold on. This is the car that belongs to Mrs. Ma Jones. This is the car that was driven around the neighborhood and rifled through and then the headlights came on. Just lit everything up beautifully for our video camera. Do you have any explanation for why your image might be on that video? Cold as I say. Oh. I just don't want to repeat. <sighs> This is an image of Mr. Jones earlier in the day before he died, hunched over, walker. Do you have an explanation why you killed this old man? I have nothing to say. This is uh, the report from the autopsy where they took the fingernails off Mrs. Ma Jones. Is there any reasonable explanation for why Mrs. Ma Jones would have your DNA under her fingernails? Is there any reason why that would happen? Are you lovers? Thought not. How are you? Hmm? Let me ask, how are you? How am I? Yeah. Perfect. What does that mean, how are you? How are you? Just seeing your age. Sorry. How old am I? Yeah. I'm 50. Oh. Why do you oh. want to know? Sort of. How long have you been in the United States Police Department? 27 years. Mm -hmm. Long. It is long, isn't it? I'm going to tell you how long it is, Rocky. It's been a very long time when somebody is faced with something like this that someone opts to sit coldly and offer no apology, no remorse, no. If I say, <laughs> what? You're going to release me? No, it isn't about that. Don't you understand that after all this conversation, you're not being released, no matter what. I know. You've killed two people, man. You're not going anywhere. This isn't about being released. This is about helping other people. But you don't care about that. That's all I've been talking about all night is you helping other people. You've done enough to hurt other people, that's for sure. But you're just sitting there coldly. Eh, I don't have anything to say. I don't really give a shit. You're not me. No, I certainly am not. Because you know the difference? I have empathy for other people, and I care no, about other No, you're people. not being charged for murder. I didn't kill anybody, either. That's the difference, man.
how you sit there coldly, I don't understand it, because it doesn't seem to be the person that your brother describes. I'm telling you, Rocky, I've been in this room tons of times with tons of people and with people who've done worse things than you. And when they see the writing on the wall and they know the jig is up, I'm caught, I'm done. There's DNA, there's video, there's every kind of evidence that there is. They finally do the right thing. They always do the right thing, almost without exception. You, sir, are an exception. In the face of all of this, you're choosing to stay back, not help anybody. And you sit there and you pretend I don't understand something, but you won't tell me what it is I don't understand. So that's kind of passive aggressive or something. I don't really understand what you're doing. Playing games is what I think. You're just playing games, Rocky? Is that what it is? Like this whole thing seems like a big game to you. You're laughing all the way through the, the interview here in the face of incredible amounts of gore and harm that you've caused. And you don't even seem to take it seriously. You're just giggling away there. Because that's not love. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know what it is. You're sure not explaining it. We're just left with what we see. And it's not an empathetic person. Yeah. It's not normal for you to be so cold. I don't get it. I want you to tell me the truth, Rocky. That's all. It's easy. It's simple. It makes sense. Just tell me the truth. you regret it? Do you feel sorry? No. You don't regret it, you don't feel sorry. It's so simple to give people that amount of comfort, that little tiny step. It's such a simple thing to give people and you won't even give them that. I don't understand.
anything? This is your chance. What do you want to say? want to say. I can see that you're feeling something. This is your chance, Rocky. If you want to say something, I would suggest that you say it. What is it? What is it? What do you want to say about this, Rocky? I don't want you to walk out of here today saying, frick, I blew my chance to explain anything or apologize for anything or express some remorse, Rocky.
What do you want to say about this, Rocky? sit there and I can feel that you are feeling something. I can see that you're emotional. Why aren't you taking this chance to at least express remorse? Maybe today you're not ready to talk about the whole ugly story, but at least say you're sorry. For what? You're an animal.
Marshall um, Lawrence. Hi. This is uh, Lawrence Louie. He's with the um, Forensic Identification Unit, Rocky. So you were asking earlier about the process. So what's going to happen now is that they're going to take some photographs of some of the marks on your body, and they're going to take your clothing uh, and uh, document all of that before they send you to jail. Okay, so they're going to do that across the room where there's no audio or video recording so that you can have some privacy there. But you will be under audio recording over there. And uh, do I have the right to reject? No. No, we're gathering evidence and you're under arrest for murder times two. So no, you don't have a lot of, a lot of leeway at this time, that's for sure. Okay. We all set to go over. Come on, Rocky. Yeah. Okay, right. Just bring <coughs> this, um, back, you guys, if you can. Uh, you got that. You can go to the washroom. You can go to the washroom for him. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Rocky, whose shoes are those you're wearing? Mine. Hmm. Rocky's just going to use the washroom for a second.